Welcome to the World Rally Championship Review 2007. Yet again, the WRC has provided plenty of evidence why this is the most extreme motorsport on the planet. Sixteen rounds made up the season, starting in January with the Monte Carlo Rally. The first half of the season included two new events for 2007. Rally Norway would provide another snow rally, while Portugal returned to the WRC fold. The second half of the season got going with the classic Rally Finland and included another brand new event on the tarmac of Ireland. The big finale took place at the Wales Rally GB. As the teams arrived in Monte Carlo, all eyes were on reigning world drivers champion Sebastian Loeb. He remained as number one driver in the Citroen team, but the trusty Zara was no more, replaced by the C4. Citroen's second driver was the young Spaniard, Danny Sordo. Loeb's main rival in the Drivers' Championship was Marcus Gronholm. He led four to the manufacturer's title in 2006 and was out to make it a double in 2007. And Ford had kept their lineup the same with Mikko Hirvonen taking the number two seat. Peter Solberg won the Drivers' Championship back in 2003 and he would be looking to show that he can still compete with the likes of Loeb and Gronholm after a disappointing 2006 season. Australia's Chris Atkinson was starting his third season in the Subaru team. Would this be his breakthrough year? The other names to look out for were Henning Solberg, who'd moved to the Stobart Ford team. He would be backed by Finland's Yali Matti Latvala and the young British driver Matthew Wilson. The Citroen Zara would still be present in the WRC in the colours of the OMV team. Austria's Manfred Stoll would again be leading their challenge. And the Swedish rally would see the start of a campaign for another team using the Ford Focus, the Munchies outfit headed by Argentina's Luis Perez Compank. The 2007 Monte Carlo rally was the 75th running of this famous event, and to mark this, the organisers had moved the base away from the Principality of Monaco to the town of Valence in order to rediscover some of the classic Monte stages in the Ardèche region. So, for world champion Sebastian Loeb, it was a case of new stages and a new car. But it didn't seem to make much difference. The three times winner of this event won both of the stages on Thursday evening that started the event. The only man to get anywhere near him was his teammate Danny Sordo. With no snow and ice this year, it was essentially a pure tarmac rally, which suited the young Spaniard down to the ground. And the domination of the two Citroen drivers continued on the first full day, where they shared the fastest times on all six stages. Marcus Gronholm had hoped to be involved in the mix for the top podium position, but he was frustrated with gear selection problems and an issue with tyre choice, but still established himself in third place. Peter Solberg was another big name, failing to make an impact in Monte Carlo. But although the Subaru man was at the lower end of the leaderboard, he declared himself happy with his progress and what was his first time on BF Goodrich tyres. But Solberg's Subaru teammate Chris Atkinson seemed to be getting to grips with the new rubber very quickly. He was sixth here last year on his Monte Carlo debut and was out to top that in 2007 as he moved up to fourth. This was a big step forward for the Australian on tarmac and his pace continued on Saturday stages and he became the first non-Citroen to win a stage over the weekend with the fastest time on the St Bonnet test. But Atkinson had a challenger for his position. Ford's Mikko Hirvonen was on the attack and on stage 12 he took fourth place from the Australian. They then swapped position on both of the following stages which ended the day. 
The final day was to consist of a run around a super special stage on the streets of Monte Carlo, just 2.8 kilometers. But Atkinson and Hirvonen would arrive in the Principality, separated by just eight tenths of a second, with Hirvonen in the lead. I think it's the first time we're going to kind of uh, fight for the position in a super special, and that's the last stage of the rally. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Although the snow and ice that can make this event so difficult was absent from the mountain stages, there were still some having problems. Both Solbergs got into trouble on stage 10. Henning lost time with this spin. While Petter's sharp reaction saved him and co-driver Phil Mills from a potential big off at the same corner. Opens up a class 40. Marcus Gronholm also got away relatively unscathed when he was caught out by a surface change and hit this bridge on stage 12. Some damaged bodywork was all he had to worry about. But Yari Matti Latvala would not be so lucky when he found a patch of loose gravel. He would be forced to retire because of damage to his Ford Focus's roll cage. But no such worries for the Citroens, Loeb and Sordo were safely through the final mountain stages. The run around Monaco's Super Special would be little more than a lap of honour for them. But that was not the case for Atkinson and Hirvonen. The Finn was the first to tackle the stage, which was around the harbour section of the Grand Prix circuit, and he set the fastest time. Here's Atkinson, and that was the time he needed to beat to take back fourth position. And he did it! He beat Hirvonen by just two tenths of a second after nearly 330 competitive kilometers. It's uh, been a massive battle, so much fun just to be in a battle with these guys again and uh, we've split the Fords here on Tarmac and our second Monte Carlo rally, it's, it's cool, just Glenn, the whole team, everyone's come so far in the past year and, and we can't wait, especially for Mexico with a new car and uh, just looking forward to the year. And here is the result, Loeb claiming the first 10 points of the season, his winning margin over Sordo 38.2 seconds, Marcus Gronholm came home in third, and behind Atkinson and Hirvonen, Peter Solberg, Tony Gardemeister and Jan Kopecky made up the rest of the top eight. And a Citroen 1-2 on the podium meant that they claimed maximum points in the Manufacturers Championship. With the introduction of Rally Norway to the WRC calendar, the Swedish rally may have lost its unique tag as the only snow event of the season, but with a good covering of snow and temperatures as low as minus 20, this still had a special feel to it. Few events felt special for Petter Solberg last season, but he was the early pace setter, leading after the first stage in the forests around Karlstad. Marcus Gronholm's main aim this year is to wrest the Drivers' Championship away from Sebastian Loeb, and as a four-time previous winner here, anything but a win in 2007 would cast doubt on his ability to achieve that. And after a ponderous start, he started to show the mastery of these conditions, and by stage five had gone ahead of Solberg into the lead. Scandinavians have traditionally dominated here, and with Tony Gardemeister in third, this looked like it would continue. Italy's Gigi Gali had briefly led the challenge for continental Europe, but his chances ended when his Citroën Zara went off the road on stage five. Danny Sordo was another Southern European struggling in the snow. 
He was in a snowbank as early as stage two and would not trouble the point scoring positions. His second place in Monte Carlo felt like a long time ago. Sordo's senior teammate Sebastian Loeb is still the only non-Scandinavian to win here. But he was on his way up the rankings. By the end of the opening day, he would be led only by Marcus Gronholm. And on day two, he set about trying to reel in his Finnish rival. Gronholm knew he had a fight on his hands. Marcus, it's a, a loss of 1.2 to Sebastian. Are you concerned about that? Yeah, he's also crazy. <laughs> he wants to win. Ah, I don't give up. But as so often happens, the outcome of this rally was decided on a tyre choice. In the middle loop of stages, Loeb had gone for a longer start, and with the covering of snow not as deep as he expected, this meant his rubber was not making proper contact with the surface. Over the space of two stages before the next service stop, Gronholm extended his lead to nearly 30 seconds. Petter Solberg had started the day still in third, but he was to become another victim of the snowbanks. Oversteer here on stage 10 saw him clip the bank on the inside, which flipped his Subaru across the road into the ditch on the outside. It looks like he was going to find his way out, but eventually he had to admit no. defeat. Around 10 minutes was lost, and he would retire at the service stop in order to protect damaged parts of the car that were twinned with his home event in Norway that was to follow. Go on, go on. His demise saw his brother Henning move into third. But his tenure was brief as Miko Hirvonen, who'd been slowed by power steering problems on the first day, soon overtook him. Also improving was Sweden's Daniel Carlsen on his first outing for OMV Citroen. He moved up to fifth when Tony Gardemeister suffered drive shaft problems at the end of day two, despite a few scares along the way. His main rival for this position was Chris Atkinson, but the Australian would suffer a similar fate to his teammate Peter Solberg when he went off the road on day three. Unlike Solberg, he got straight out again, but had sustained damage to his wheels, which cost him time and any chance of beating Carlson. And there were nervous moments for rally leader Marcus Gronholm on the final day. He had reported a problem with his engine on the road section to the day's first stage, a stage which saw the retirement of the Stobart Fords of Yadi Matti Latvala and Matthew Wilson. The problems were identified as a blocked oil cooler breather pipe. But a few tweaks between stages looked to have prevented a repeat of this in Gronholm's car. Victory was soon to be his. Gronholm eventually beat Lowe by 53.8 seconds. Further down, Tony Gardemeister hung on for sixth, and Manfred Stoll finished seventh. Gronholm's victory meant he moved into second in the Drivers' Championship, two points behind Loeb. While in the Manufacturers' Championship, Ford were now just one point behind Citroen. It was just a few hours' drive from Karlstad in Sweden to Hama, the host city for Norway's entry into the WRC. And with the snow lying deep, the snow banks were even bigger. Add in some very tight and twisty sections, and the crews knew they were in for a hard time. In their home event, it was the Solberg brothers who were the big draw. But once the action got going, it was Miko Hirvonen who was demanding attention. If these were tough stages, he looked very much at home, taking a lead of 11 seconds over his Ford teammate Marcus Gronholm after the first stage. 
But make no mistake, these stages were tough. Surface changes from snow to ice to exposed gravel were making tyre choices, in particular the length of studs crucial. And even if you got this right, there were some big snowbanks lining these narrow stages. And if you needed any proof, here's Sebastian Loeb on the first stage. The Frenchman doesn't make many mistakes, but he followed that with this overshoot on stage five. But he was still quick enough to hold third place at the end of day one. The nastiest of these stages was reckoned to be the 44km Elverum test which opened day two. Was this where Miko Hirvonen would come unstuck? The answer was no. He beat Gronholm by 5.1 seconds and Loeb was a further 14 off the pace. And at service, Hirvonen's closest rival seemed to be owning up that he had no answer to the young Finn's speed. Why aren't you catching Miko? Sorry? Why aren't you catching I, Miko? I can't catch him now, so that, that's the reason. There is no other reason. Why? I can't. That's the reason. Yeah? Easy. And Loeb appeared to have no answers either. And in the heavy snow of the mountain stage, he looked as though he might settle for third, which would still be a decent contribution to his championship hopes. But nothing could be taken for granted in Norway. Here he is on the short Lillehammer stage, number 12. By the time the spectators got him out of there, he'd lost eight minutes. And on the following stage, he suffered a similar fate. Another nine minutes were lost. Hope would eventually finish 14th. His only reward, a single manufacturer's point. I said, OK, well, uh, nothing to lose, and uh, we lost again. <laughs> Loeb's demotion allowed Petter Solberg to move up to third. He'd maintained that his approach would be a conservative one, and this was now paying dividends. But his main competition for the final podium spot was coming from older brother Henning, and they would be separated by less than 10 seconds going into the final day. Petter looked to be at a disadvantage as he had run out of the long studded tyres and Henning was not going to show much brotherly love as he went on the attack on the day's first stage, leaving Petter's Subaru over 10 seconds behind. And Henning's third place would have greater significance. If Hirvonen and Gronholm got home safely, this would be the first time Ford had occupied all the podium positions since New Zealand in 1979. And they looked unlikely to make any mistakes. The only worry for Hirvonen came on the final stage when he caught Manfred Stoll, who'd had to dig himself out of a snowbank. When Hirvonen won his first WRC event in Australia, Gronholm had crashed out early and Loeb was laid up with a broken arm. But this was the real thing, Hirvonen had beaten the WRC's best fair and square. Yes. 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 Leading in stage one and really fighting against Marcus and Sebastian and, and came into the finish as a winner, so uh, fantastic rally, absolutely fantastic. Confirmation of the Ford 1, 2, 3 and with Yali Matti Lafalo in fifth, it was four in the top five. Gigi Gali in the privately entered Zara was the top Citroen in sixth. Gronholm's second place meant that he took over the lead in the Drivers' Championship, while Hirvonen also moved above Loeb into second. And their combined efforts saw Ford take a 16-point lead over Citroen in the manufacturer's standings.
pounds gone and three different winners. Subaru launching the new Impreza, which they hoped would get Petter Solberg back on top of the podium. And all the colour of the Fiesta. Rally Mexico 2007 provided a mix more potent than the strongest tequila. So Petter Solberg and his Subaru were under close scrutiny. His response, fastest time on the opening stage and his teammate Chris Atkinson was third. And the Norwegian followed this with scratch times on the following two morning stages. The Impreza was handling these rough undulating stages superbly. So Petter Solberg was the star of the morning, although his brother Henning did his best to upstage him on the opening stage. Replay show how he got too wide and caught a rock on the outside and at that speed it was enough to flip the focus. Ford had arrived in Mexico on a high after their 1-2 in Norway. But with Gronholm first on the road and Hirvonen and third, they'd expected to struggle in the gravel of the morning stages. But even in the cleaner lines of the afternoon's repeat run, they still seem to be off the pace. While Hirvonen did improve a little to go in front of Danny Sordo for fourth, Gronholm was not happy with his setup and could not get on terms with those ahead of him. But one man who was making ground in the afternoon sun was Sebastian Loeb, who was in second place. This, remember, was also the first time on gravel for the C4. Just as Solberg Subaru was being watched, everyone was looking to see how the new Citroen handled these stages. And like with Subaru, there were lots of positives here as the Frenchman started to reel in Solberg. Opens extra long and but on the following stages, Loeb's pursuit of top spot would Germany. become much easier. On stage Open 5, Solberg was starting to lose oil pressure. And on the following road section, with the problem getting worse, Petter was forced to retire. Desperate disappointment, but at least it appeared as if this was down to the stage conditions rather than straight mechanical failure. A stone had broken the oil cooler and Petter remained positive. Overall picture, anyway, it's it's good, you know. Even second time through the stages, we have been uh, very fast and we have been fighting, and and for me, it's it's a very good uh, good information to have for the for the um, for the next few rallies. That left Loeb with a lead of over 25 seconds, but Subaru still had plenty of interest as Chris Atkinson was now second. But the Australian would not stay there for long, as on the second day, the Fords started to get their act together. On the opening stage of the day, Hirvonen moved into second, but less than 20 seconds separated him from Marcus Gronholm in fifth. Gronholm needed to move up the rankings in order to maintain his position at the top of the driver's standings, he was not hanging about. On stage 11, he made up that time to take over in second place. Ronald was now much happier with his car, but as far as the win was concerned, it was looking all too late. Loeb was in no mood to just defend his lead and instead spent the day attacking and extended his advantage to nearly a minute. But behind, competition was still intense. The first flaws in the Subaru appeared when Chris Atkinson lost turbo boost on stage 12 and started to slip out of contention. Miko Hirvonen was the hero in Norway, but he was finding it more difficult here. He was lucky to get away with this spin on stage 13 and gave up third place to Danny Sordo in the process. Nyt menee nurin. Lähden mennä. Pyörätoa. 
Sordo had been way off the pace on the snow of Sweden and Norway, but on the Mexican gravel he was one of the few to show any consistency. Although he would have to give way to Hirvonen on the final day, this was still a great riposte to those who doubted his ability away from the tarmac. And another Citroen driver who was dispelling doubters was Sebastian Loeb. He came here on the back foot, lying third in the championship after his no score in Norway. But he and co-driver Daniel Elner were now well on their way to career win number 30. With nine of the 16 events that make up the championship on gravel, it was essential the C4 proved itself on this surface. And while others had stumbled, the Citroen had yet again been near perfect. Behind the top four, Chris Atkinson hung on to take fifth, with Manfred Stoll, Yari Matti Latvala and Matthew Wilson completing the top eight. Marcus Gronholm maintained his lead in the Drivers' Championship, but Loeb's win moved him into second place, four points behind. But Ford was still in charge in the manufacturer's standings, still 15 points ahead of Citroen. Rally Portugal was back in the WRC calendar after an absence of five years and it marked its return in style with a super special around the impressive Algarve Stadium. Marcus Gronholm may have been fastest, but not for the first time at a stadium stage. It was Shishi Gali who stole the show with this cheeky stunt, and that's a Portugal football shirt he was wearing just to make sure the crowd was on his side. Gronholm held on to the lead through the first gravel stage of day one, although it was his teammate Miko Hirvonen who set the fastest time here. He was second. But looming on the horizon was the red Citroen C4 of Sebastian Loeb, and when Gronholm damaged the shock absorber on the following stage, the Frenchman swooped. He closed within three seconds of the leader, taking over in second for good measure. Hirvonen was now third, while Peter Solberg was again showing improvements in his new Subaru, but was fourth, less than ten seconds behind first place. On to the afternoon stages and Gronholm was quickest on the Tavira test. But Loeb posted fastest times on the two stages that completed the day to take over the lead from the Ford driver. These stages were demanding on tyres and when Gronholm reached the end of stage seven, it was apparent what had cost him time. It appeared that Loeb had looked after his tyres better. But tyre preservation was the least of worries for FIA Juniors competitor Martin Prokop. The Czech driver provided the most spectacular moment of the weekend with this off on stage five. Prokop received some minor injuries, but his Citroen C2 fared less well. With rain in the air on day two, tyre choice was going to be a big issue, and the two leading contenders had selected different compounds. Marcus Gronholm had opted for a hard tyre, hoping the stages would dry out, but he lost five seconds to Loeb, who'd gone for a softer rubber on the opening stage, but was still confident that he'd made the right selection. I think it was a little bit sleepy, more sleepy in the end, and he had better tyres for that, but he will be destroyed in the next two, I'm sure. But it appeared that Gronholm's confidence was misplaced. The stages stayed wet, and Loeb built a lead of 15 seconds. Loeb and his Citroen team had yet again got it right. And despite playing safe and choosing a hard compound for the afternoon stages, Loeb increased his lead to a rally-winning 40.5 seconds. While Loeb was making it look effortless, others were finding these new Portuguese stages more demanding. One of the trickiest features were the many crests. On these unfamiliar stages, numerous drivers went off the road after taking the humps and jumps too fast. Chris Atkinson had to retire his Subaru after this off. You all right? Yeah, you all right. 
Chico! The leading Portuguese driver, Armindo Arrojo, also came unstuck in similar circumstances. But he did manage to get back on the road. There was little to decide on the last day with all the major contenders separated by considerable margins. Marcus Gronholm had survived a scare at the end of day two, but his Ford Focus was found to be underweight. The team successfully argued that this was due to pieces which had fallen off his damaged car in the stages. He was now safe in second. Miko Hirvonen, one of the few drivers with previous knowledge of these stages, came home in third. While Petter Solberg gave further evidence that his team is still on the right track with the new Subaru by taking fourth. And Danny Sordo with his fifth place finish showed that he was making real progress on loose surfaces and more importantly that the Citroen could still take on Ford in the Manufacturers Championship. But there was to be a late drama courtesy of the Scrutineers. It was discovered that six Fords, including those of Gronholm and Hirvonen and the Stobart VK team, had run with rear side windows that were half a millimetre too thin. A breach of the homologation rules. All of those cars were given a five minute penalty that would drastically alter the final standings. We were invited to a meeting with the stewards to, to make our case. Uh, and we got the penalty for five minutes per car. And we accept this penalty and we will not make any appeal. Gronholm was demoted to fourth and Hirvonen to fifth. Thus, Peter Solberg would now pick up eight points for second and Danny Sordo six for third. And in the driver's standings, whereas Loeb had finished the rally thinking he'd just closed the gap on Gronholm, he was now championship leader. And his Citroen team had now made significant inroads into Ford's lead in the Manufacturers' Championship, reducing their advantage to eight points. WRC had arrived in the Cordoba region of Argentina for round six of the championship, but this was only a stopover. On Thursday morning with the recce and shakedown complete, the crews and their teams were back on the plane to Argentina's capital Buenos Aires, the location of the opening stage, a super special around the city's River Plate Stadium. The fastest around this short stage was Miko Hirvonen. This was an innovative move by the organisers. What they couldn't cater for was the weather. Storms and fog saw two of the planes that were to fly everybody back to Cordoba for the continuation of the rally on Friday morning not arrive until the early hours, while a third plane could not land in the fog and had to return to Buenos Aires. So with many of the crews hardly having any sleep and others still in Buenos Aires, the unprecedented decision was taken to cancel all but the Cordoba Super Special stage that was to end the day. A frustrating time for the drivers with seven stages and a day's driving lost. And there was a suggestion that Sebastian Loeb's concentration had been affected when he stalled on stage 10 of La Cumbre, the first on Saturday. But if this was the case, he quickly pulled himself together to set the fastest time and take the lead. Second fastest was Petter Solberg. But he put a hole in his good work with this spin on stage 11, which saw him drop to third behind Marcus Gronholm. So it was the old low versus Gronholm double act again vying for top spot. Could the Finn in the Ford Focus bring an end to Loeb's run of wins on gravel? A win here would be particularly sweet for Gronholm after the illegal rear window fiasco that resulted in that penalty time and loss of second place and the championship lead in Portugal. But the first morning's action suggested there would be no revenge for Gronholm in Argentina, but won all five stages before service to take a 15 second lead. The first afternoon stage was the famous Santa Rosa test. The thousands of fans that had gathered witnessed a fight back from Gronholm, who set the fastest time to take back a few seconds from Loeb. 
As the pace was gathering up front, Solar had lost ground, but still held third going into stage 16. But somewhere in this no. stage, he damaged his radiator. I can't believe Supervision, Phil. Go ahead, Supervision, uh, Phil. Stopped in stage engine. And another retirement followed. Miko Hirvonen, who had lost ground after winning both Super Specials, was now back up to third. He too was looking to make amends for the loss of points in Portugal. With the rally reduced to two days, everyone was in a hurry to make their mark. There was plenty of competition for position. Chris Atkinson, with new co-driver Stefan Brevo, following the retirement of Glenn McNeil, was fighting it out behind the top runners with Danny Sordo. But despite it all looking good, Atkinson was not happy with his setup. He proceeded to drop around 30 seconds over the afternoon stages. But just when Sordo had hoped to take advantage of what had become a bad performance in Solberg's retirement, his C4 developed a hydraulic problem and saw him having to switch to manual gear shift. A situation he was clearly not happy with. The problems of Sordo and Atkinson meant that Yari Mati Lafala was promoted to fourth. While his Stobart VK teammate Henning Solberg was up to fifth, making it four Ford Focuses in the top five. Back at the front of the field, while Gronholm had shared the honours with Loeb in stage wins in the second part of the day, the Frenchman had extended his lead to 19.2 seconds. Both drivers were aware that on the final day of Argentina, with two runs through the El Condor and Mina Clavero stages, they still had some of the toughest kilometres of the season to contend with before the result was settled. Lope's response was not to defend, but attack. He went fastest on the day's opening stage, extending his lead to 27 and a half seconds, and then added another 10 seconds on the following stage. Any chance Gronholm had of a win was ended when he went off the road on the second run through Mina Clavero, second best to Loeb and the C4 again. And Danny Sordo's C4 was back on the pace. Two stage wins had seen him move back into sixth, again getting the better of Chris Atkinson, who was also improving. But it was still four forwards in the top five on the final leaderboard, with Henning Solberg hanging on to fifth, and Yadi Mati Latvala equaling his best ever WRC finish in fourth. Given in third again, but of most significance was that Loeb had beaten Gronholm for first place. Loeb's lead in the Drivers' Championship was now three points. Latvala's fourth place saw him move into the top eight for the first time. And that performance alongside Henning Solberg's fifth place meant Stobart VK moved ahead of Subaru into third in the Manufacturers' Championship. Sardinia, wonderful scenery, great beaches, blue seas. But some of the toughest, rockiest stages in the championship. And it was in this environment that Marcus Gronholm set out to try and end Sebastian Loeb's run of three wins on gravel. And he needed to do this to revalidate his claims as a contender for the Drivers' Championship. And with Loeb struggling with road sweeping duties, Gronholm was getting the better of his rival on the first morning. But so were a few others, including Yari Mati Lavala in the Stobart VK Ford. The 22-year-old Finn was building a reputation as the hottest young talent in the WRC, and he added to this by holding the lead at the first service stop. Loeb was in fifth place, more than 10 seconds behind. He would be looking to make up that time on the afternoon loop, which was a repeat of the first three stages. Here he would have the advantage of cleaner lines. More grip means more speed. But Gronholm beat him on stage four, and in doing so, took the lead from Latvala. In the last two years on this event, Gronholm has lost the lead to Loeb after being caught out by the stage conditions. And on stage five, it looked like history was repeating itself. Those flames coming from the front left wheel arch were caused by fluid leaking from the damper following an impact with a rock. With his suspension impaired and his car kicking and diving through the stage, he was losing time to Loeb, who moved up to third. 
but he did not lose as much time as Yari Mati Lapala. That collision with a roadside rock removed his front left wheel. That was the end of his day and any chance of his first podium finish. Rocks and deep ruts exposed after the first run are one of the main hazards in these repeated stages. Chris Atkinson was another to suffer. His Subaru was bumped off the road by a rock on the racing line. Atkinson's Subaru teammate Petter Solberg was getting over the rocks and through the ruts. Having to do this with an effective brake disc was hampering his challenge. Marcus Guaranon was still fighting his way through the stages, but with his damaged suspension, it was only a matter of time before he gave up the lead to Loeb. This happened on stage six. Loeb and the Citroen C4 would take a lead of 22.6 seconds into the second day. It would be a tall order for Gronholm to get back on terms with the Frenchman. He tried, but again, he could not quite tame these stages. On stage eight, he lost his bumper, and with it went his spare wheel. And with one of his tires damaged, he had to nurse his car through this and the following stage to service. Lopes' lead was now in excess of 40 seconds. He was in control. More good news for Citroen was the improvement of Danny Sordo. He'd been down in 10th on day one, but had been picking off his rivals one by one and was now closing on Henning Solberg, who was fourth. Solberg in the Ford Focus had been holding it together very nicely. But this spin on stage 12, the last of day two, would hand fourth place to Sordo. Having another steady rally was Miko Hirvonen, who'd watched some of the early pace setters fall down and now held third place, the position he'd made his own on the gravel so far this season. On to the final day, all Marcus Gronholm could do was try and put some pressure on Loeb, but it was he who made a mistake when he overshot this junction on the opening stage. And here's Loeb on the same stage. That collision was quickly followed by another. His pace notes were a bit too quick for that right-hander. That double impact had damaged his steering. And this tight, narrow stage was no place to have faulty steering. A few kilometers later, he was off the road. A real collector's item, this one, a low retirement. And this would be his second no score of the season. When I, I went in the corner, I slide a bit too much, hit a bit uh, the ditch with the rear, but it's uh, put me the front also in the ditch, and, and then it was, it was a stone, and I broke the uh, something on the on the steering. Uh, then I continue three kilometers. The car was just going, but not not so good, and then uh, suddenly it broke completely, so I had to stop. Granholm now had five stages at 44 kilometers between him and an unlikely but vital victory. As well as the 10 points which would give him and co-driver Timo Rautiainen back the championship lead, this would also be Marcus's 27th WRC victory, taking him ahead of Carlos Sainz in the all-time standings. He was still behind Loeb on that list, but more importantly, today he was number one. Yeah! Team director Malcolm Wilson was probably as surprised as anyone to be celebrating victory here. Marcus, it end of rally Sardinia. It's a win, and probably more importantly, that's ten points. Yeah, it's very good now to take the ten points, and and uh, and so when Seb uh, scores zero, so that's very good. The one bright spot for Citroen was Danny Sordo's third place. But Gronholm's win puts him seven points ahead of Loeb in the Drivers' Championship. While Miko Hirvonen's second place saw him move to just four points behind the Citroen driver. 
and in the Manufacturers' Championship, Ford opened up a lead at 21 points over Citroen. Sardinia had done plenty of damage to cars and reputations, and there would be no let-up in Greece's Acropolis Rally. The man with the biggest reputation is Sebastian Loeb. After throwing away victory and the championship lead in Sardinia, he wants to prove that he is still number one. But as early as stage two, he made a mistake, which cost him a few seconds, left him down in sixth. Already, Marcus Granholm was sensing an opportunity to score another victory over the Citroen driver, and it was he who led after this stage. The Finn was looking much more confident than earlier in the season. Also looking in better shape were the Subarus of Peter Solberg and Chris Atkinson. They had gone with harder compound tyres than the rest of the field, and they used these to great effect as the first morning went on to overhaul Gronholm and return to the first service in first and second with Atkinson in the lead. But on the afternoon stages, some of the old handling problems returned, which would allow Marcus Gronholm to return to the top spot with a lead of 8.3 seconds. Lope had also closed up on the Subarus, and significantly he was now less than 10 seconds off the lead. Indeed, the top six, which was completed by Miko Hirvonen and Danny Sordo, were covered by less than 11 seconds. But day two was certain to spread the field out, with two runs through the 48-kilometre Aji Theodori stage, the longest of the season. Miko Hirvonen was the first to feel its bite, although it was a late pace note rather than the conditions that sent him off the road at 150 kilometers an hour. He was very lucky to avoid those trees, and miraculously, he made it back onto the stage with just the annoyance of a shattered windscreen to deal with. Chris Atkinson was not so lucky. He suffered two punctures, and with nothing left of his front right tyre by the end of the stage, his chance of a podium finish had gone. But his teammate, Peter Solberg, was very much better, and was holding off Loeb in what was now the race for second place. Marcus Gronholm had extended his lead in this stage the 10th, but two stages later, he came close to ruining all his hard work when he overshot at this right-hander. Danny Sordo was another having problems here. His gearbox had failed, a similar problem to what he experienced in Argentina. His subsequent retirement was not helping Citroen's attempts to catch Ford in the Manufacturers' Championship. On to stage 14, the second run through Aji Theodori, and if the first pass had been relatively kind on the cars, it was not true of the repeat. Miko Hirvonen, who was now fourth, kept it on the road this time, but had destroyed his front's right tyre. Both Chris Atkinson and Peter Solberg had damaged a damper, but Solberg was still holding on to second, and Sebastian Loeb was also in trouble with his tyres. He had to travel the last eight kilometers with two punctures. The front left looked pretty bad, but the front right was completely gone. But again, one man who was problem free through this toughest of stages was Marcus Gronholm. He was fastest and his lead was now over 30 seconds. Peter Solberg's damper problems would be the decisive factor in the dispute over second place. The time he lost over the remaining stages of day two allowed Sebastian Loeb to establish himself in that position. Nobody was taking any risks on the final day. Marcus Gronholm was just hoping that the gods would be kind to him and keep his Ford Focus free from damage or mechanical problems. 
The Focus had won the Acropolis in five of the last seven years, including Gronholm's victory last year, and Marcus and co-driver Timo Rautiainen were about to make it six. For good measure, the Finnish duo got the better of Loeb and Eleanor in the Super Special that ended the rally, and this was also Ford's 60th WRC win. This was a great achievement for the Ford team. Malcolm Wilson and Christian Lorio, the man who designed the Focus World Rally Car, were overcome with emotion. Behind the top three, Miko Hirvonen held on to four, heading Solberg to fifth, while Chris Atkinson fought his way back to sixth. But the headline was that for the second round of running, Gronholm had got the better of Sebastian Lowe. What are you going to be doing over the summer break? What are you going to be concentrating on? Are you going to be working a lot on the car? No, we have few tests and then we have also quite a good uh, holiday period, so I'm happy for that. Congratulations. Thank you. Marcus Gronholm's win took him into the season break as championship leader, nine points ahead of Sebastian Lowe. Hivenham was still third, Danny Sordo fourth, while Peter Solberg had moved closer to them with his podium finish. Solberg's third place helped Subaru to move into third ahead of Stobart BK in the Manufacturers' Championship, but at the top, BP Ford were beginning to stretch away. The credentials of Loeb, Sordo and the Citroen C4 would be tested to the full in the second half of the season if they were to challenge Ford here. The second half of the season got underway at Rally Finland. This gave Marcus Gronholm a great opportunity to increase his championship lead as he went for a record equaling seventh win at his home event. Sebastian Loeb is one of the many non-Scandinavian greats not to win here. If he could overturn that statistic, it would be very timely. So everyone expected to see a Finn in a Ford Focus setting the pace. That was the case early on, but not the one we expected. At the end of stage two, Yari Mati Latvala in the Stobart VK-backed car was heading the standings. While Miko Hirvonen was also ahead of his senior teammate in what was the first event for the 2007 version of the Focus. But Latvala's reign at the top was short-lived. On stage three, the rubber seal on his window popped out, a freak occurrence which caused the 22-year-old to lose concentration soon after he went off the road. I lost my concentration, stole the engine in this junction, a little bit too much heat, and a um, kilometer after that, off the road, we went backwards to the ditch. Stupid mistake. Latvala would eventually retire with damage suspension later on day one. Latvala was one of 11 Ford Focuses to start this event, a record for a single manufacturer, and the two leading cars were beginning to take control. Gronholm was fastest on stage five and took the lead, and went on to win the six remaining stages on day one. But on each occasion, Hirvonen had been just a few temps behind and was just 4.4 seconds behind at the end of the day. But Loeb was another 20 seconds off the lead. It was apparent the C4 couldn't compete with the focus on the finished gravel. I try really hard and cannot do really better. So. I try to continue, but <laughs> I'm on the maximum. The big attraction on day two were the two runs through the on Empoyer stage. But Manfred Stoll and Ilka Miner never made it that far. They rolled their OMV Citroen on stage 13. Miko Hirvonen was still on four wheels, but only just. He was giving it everything through on Empoya, but perhaps he was giving a bit too much. Well, there was many big moments. I was pushing a little bit too hard, and it wasn't the perfect state, but quite scary, bloody hell. Britain's Guy Wilkes in one of those 11 focuses was another giving himself a few scares. He took this jump way too fast, but got away with it. 
Ronald, though, was looking much smoother. His experience was beginning to tell. He was fastest both times through on Empoya, and by the end of the day, his lead was over 20 seconds. Lope had started the day with a fastest stage time, but that was as good as it got for him. He was still a distant third, a minute behind Gronholm. Chris Atkinson was going well in fourth. His Subaru teammate Petter Solberg had been as high as fifth, but still frustrated by his car's handling, he retired on day two to allow the team more time to analyse those problems before the next event in Germany. Solberg's retirement allowed his brother Henning in the Ford Focus to move up to fifth. Day three was made up of just three stages, and these presented no problem to Marcus Gronholm. He completed the stages 24.2 seconds ahead of Hjervenen, equaling Hannu Mikola's record of seven Rally Finland wins. I am very happy, yes. I mean, when I was private driver in the 90s, I could never believe that I, I can win seven times here. What is more important today, stood here now, the seventh win or the ten points off Sebastian? I would say uh, both. It's nice to have the 10 points now. We are going into a very difficult rally in Germany, so now I'm looking forward to, to take the title this year. Further back, Chevy Ponce finished sixth on his debut for Subaru, while Irmo Arber and Mats Osberg in seventh and eighth posted their best ever WRC finishes. But it was mission accomplished for Marcus Gronholm. Ten more championship points, and with Loeb in third, his lead in the driver's standings increased to 13. Gronholm's performance added to Hirvonen's second place also meant that Ford moved to 40 points ahead of Citroen in the Manufacturers' Championship. While Marcus Gronholm has ruled in Finland in recent years, Sebastian Loeb has been equally dominant in Rally Deutschland, winning it in each of the five years since it was introduced into the WRC calendar in 2002. Thus, it was essential he made it six to re-establish his claim for the driver's title. And on the first morning, he looked to be on his way as he took the lead. In the race for the Drivers' Championship, it would be essential that Danny Sordo could challenge and hopefully beat Marcus Gronholm on tarmac. And so far, he was keeping his part of the bargain. But Citroën also had another card to play. Francois Duval, whose only outing so far this season was in a Skoda Fabia in Greece, had returned driving a Citroën Zara in the OMV colours. And it was he who was second to Loeb, with Sordo third. Duval had been Loeb's teammate at Citroën in 2005, a difficult season which saw him temporarily replaced by Carlos Sainz after a number of offs, before he returned to win in Australia. But now, without a works drive, he had some scores to settle. On the afternoon stages, he'd opted for a slightly harder tyre compound than Loeb, and with the stages staying dry, it looked like Duval had got it right. He took time off his former teammate on stages four and five, and in stage six, he took the lead. What a return for the Belgian driver. Your leader at the end of day one. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I am very happy. Uh, I am very surprised after uh, eight months uh, stay on my home. I uh, working uh, a lot, and uh, I am very happy for today. And this was turning into an uncomfortable day for Loeb. Gronholm had also gone for the harder tyre option and had moved up to third ahead of Sordo. And any chance Sordo had of reclaiming third went away in a pool of oil as he retired on stage six. The cause, a problem with the cylinder block, had also put the Spaniard out of Rally Finland. Worrying times for Citroën, as they must have been wondering if Loeb's C4 was carrying the same bolt. But everything looked sound as he entered day two, even if he was in the unknown territory of not leading in Germany. 
And indeed, it was Francois Duval who seemed to be suffering under the weight of leadership. This spin on stage seven was followed by another mistake and a stall at the start of stage eight. He suddenly found himself down in fourth, over 25 seconds behind Loeb. Definitely not the start to the day he wanted. Loeb's start to day two was much better than the end to day one. Not only had he recovered the lead, but he'd also seen Miko Hibbner move into the reckoning. He'd gone in front of Gronholm to take second place. No sign of any team orders in the Ford camp. But Gronholm soon reasserted his authority. He retook second and started to draw away. But he was still the best part of 30 seconds behind Loeb. Hirvonen was now battling for third with the resurgent Duval. And the Belgian was still going for that podium. He would end the day just over five seconds ahead of the bin. The constantly shifting leaderboard was a feature of this rally, as behind the top four, Peter Solberg was yo-yoing up and down the classification. He eventually finished sixth, one place behind Jan Kopecky, who'd been swapping fifth position regularly with Tony Gardemeister until the Finn damaged a wheel on the final day. But third place would become much clearer early on the final day as Duval was not hanging around. Helped by his tyre choice, he soon opened the gap on Kievenen. Third place looked safe, but despite claiming he'd be happy with this, he was closing on Gronholm in second. He won the first four stages of the day and going into the final one, Gronholm was just 5.6 seconds ahead. And here is the Finn on the final stage. Look for the marshal waving on the left. He's warning that there's a cow loose on the stage. That caused Gronholm no problems. But at the next corner... Marcus admitted at the end he'd been distracted by the animal and had not listened to the next pace note. He limped to the end of the stage, eventually dropping to four. Duval had not only put in the performance of the rally, but he also had provided an unexpected points bonus for Loeb. who, as expected, had taken his sixth successive win in Germany, and the Frenchman was grateful. I think uh, I can just say thank you to Mr. Francois Duval, huh, because he was pushing incredibly hard, and uh, okay, we had just to drive carefully today, and uh, no big risks. That was a costly error for Gronholm as he would be picking up just five points instead of eight in the Drivers' Championship. So Loeb closed two eight points behind Gronholm, while Kiervenen was now on 63. But with Sordo's retirement, Ford continued to draw away in the manufacturer's classification. After his last stage excursion in Germany, the pressure was back on Marcus Gronholm to deliver in New Zealand. A victory below on these gravel stages would be a big psychological blow to the pin. But after Gronholm's demolition job on the Finnish gravel, there were doubts about the ability of Loeb's C4 on the loose. All in all, this was another tasty concoction. But early on, everything looked clear-cut. Gronholm was first on the road, normally a disadvantage on the loose New Zealand gravel, but some overnight rain, which helped hold the surface together, plus a superior tyre choice, saw him take the lead on the first morning. And even when Loeb gained parity in the tyre department, he could only claw back a few temps on the afternoon stages. At the end of day one, Gronholm's lead was a level 13 seconds. But from then on, nothing was so straightforward, and what developed was one of the greatest duels in WRC history. 
Stage six, the first of the second day. Loeb on a harder tire compound to 3.1 seconds off Granholm. But with some dampness in the ground on stage seven, Granholm restored his lead plus a few extra seconds. Stage eight was bone dry, and Loeb took a chunk out of Gronholm's lead, reducing it to just 3.6 seconds. Marcus is a bit too soft, like uh, Yavonen, so it's the opposite from yesterday morning. <laughs> At service, there was a lot to ponder. Tire choice had already played a big part, and with the weather still changeable, and with more long abrasive stages to come, the rally could still be won or lost on these decisions. Loeb had again gone for a slightly harder option than Gronholm and shaved three tenths off the Finns lead on stage 10. On to stage 11, the last of the day. That was the time Gronholm had to beat to keep the lead 17 minutes, 3.5 seconds. But Gronholm had suffered a puncture in the stage. And he was outside. Loeb would go into the final day with a lead of just 1.7 seconds. At some point of the stage I hit the front and uh, the car started to shake, and, but the moves was working. But after that I, I, I have to slow down and I, the split came and that I was three after all immediately. Exciting stuff at the top and there was plenty to look at down the field. Mikko Hirvonen in the Ford Focus was on his own in third. But behind him, Chris Atkinson and Yadi Mati Lavola were involved in another tense battle for fourth. While the slippery New Zealand gravel was taking its toll, Manfred Stoll slid off the road on stage four. Another disappointing rally for the Austrian driver. And Henning Solberg was also made to pay for a mistake on stage eight. Well, Chevy Ponce definitely had a rally to forget. He went off and into the foliage on stage four. And worse was to follow on day two. Spectacular stuff, but this was all merely a sideshow to the pulsating battle up front, and the best was still to come. Stage 12 was little more than five kilometers long, but that was enough for Gronholm to overturn Loeb's advantage. But on stage 13, Loeb went back into the lead by half a second and extended the gap to 2.9 on stage 14. However, the next two stages belong to Gronholm as he reduced the lead to 2.3 seconds on stage 15 and then to just two temps on 16. With the last stage, the three-kilometer Mystery Creek Sprint, stage 17, the classic Vanga Coast could decide it. And here is Loeb defending those two temps of a second. Sur droite, 120 bon milon, 70 mètres. Droite, 90, seul long. 80 mètres. Gauche, 120 moins, 50 mètres. Gauche, 120 moins, 50 mètres. Gauche, 80 plus, seul long. Gronholm had retaken the lead, but only by seven tenths of a second. Rally New Zealand would be decided in front of thousands of spectators at Mystery Creek. Gronholm went first and set a time of 2 minutes 52.9, which meant that Loeb had to set a time of 2 minutes 52.2 or faster to win. And this is the Frenchman in the last sector of the stage. Watch that clock closely. Not quick enough, Gronholm had won the rally by just three tenths of a second. He'd come out on top in this epic battle, and didn't he just know it? What a fantastic battle! Yeah, an incredible battle, but uh, to lose for. 0.3 seconds, I think. Uh, really 
stock in. And here's another perspective on this result with Virtual Spectator. You can see that after 354 kilometers, that gap equates to just 7.6 meters. That's about two and a half car lengths. Compare that to third place Miko Hirvonen over a minute and 40 seconds and 2.6 kilometers behind. Outside the top three, Chris Atkinson beat Yali Matti Lapala for fourth position, but the only statistic that really counted was those three tenths of a second that separated Gronholm from Loeb. That extended Gronholm's lead in the Drivers' Championship by just two points, but it would feel like more to the thin, although Loeb could console himself with the fact that his Citroen C4 had shown it could match the focus on gravel. But in the Manufacturers' Championship, the Ford Focus was definitely on top. It was now seeming a matter of when, rather than if, the Ford Works team lifted this title. Spain's rally Catalonia got underway with a remembrance service for WRC legend Colin McRae, who had died in a helicopter accident three weeks before. Tributes were led by Colin's former teammate and rival, Carlos Sainz. He was amazing, amazing driver. He was really a, a champion. He, was, he has done so much for, for rally and, uh, and we have such a good time all together. It's very difficult to describe, but only I can say is thank you to Colin because we have such a good time the rally family, we have such a good time. It was a fantastic man. Rally Catalonia marked the first of a double header of tarmac rallies, where Sebastian Loeb hoped to reduce Marcus Granholm's lead in the championship. Part of all the tarmac rallies, it's on these flowing roads where Gronholm feels most at home, and it was he who was leading after the first stage. But his time out front would be short as Loeb went to the top of the classification on the following stage. And Gronholm also saw the second Citroen, piloted by the home nation's Danny Sordo, go ahead of him. Sordo finished second here last year, and it looked like he had designs on going one better when he took the lead on stage four. But in the wet weather on the day's final two stages, Loeb's experience told as he regained the initiative. With all this rain about, tyre choice had become critical, and while the Citroen team were getting it right, Marcus Gronholm and his four team were getting it wrong. On stages three and four, expecting rain, he'd taken a slip with cuts. With the rain failing to materialise, he lost around 20 seconds. And on the final stage of the day, when it did rain, he was on a dry weather option. He ended the day over 50 seconds off the lead. A sign of what might have been with a better tyre choice came on day two, where the Finns set three fastest stage times, but by then the damage was already done. But things could have been much worse for Grunholm as Spain saw another outing for Francois Duval in the OMV Kronos Citroën Zara. But the man who had finished second in Germany lost his chance of a repeat of that result as early as stage one, where he spun. However, the Belgian did recover to finish a very creditable fifth. Among those who would not be on the final leaderboard were Manfred Stoll, who added another off to his growing list this season. And Jan Kopecky was also off the road on the same stage, number three. <laughs> Chris Atkinson was also in trouble, clipping the bank here and up on two wheels, but he got away with this one and would recover to finish eighth. But the Citroens were very much in control.
Here's Danny Sordo on one of the fastest sections of this rally. He tops 200 kilometers an hour there. And Sordo had completed his primary task here, which was to beat Gronholm. The Ford man left to rue those day one tyre choices. And this is Sebastian Loeb on his way to first place, reducing Gronholm's lead by four points in the championship. Car is going very well to Tarmac Rallys to come, so I hope we can do the same results another time and hopefully we can take him some some good points so a great day for Loeb and his Citroen team in the Spanish Sun and that was Citroen's second one two of the season the first being in Monte Carlo behind Gronholm Nico Kiernan came home in four Loeb now six points behind, Gronholm Sordo moved on to 39 points, but was still a distant fourth. Citroen scoring seven more points than Ford in Spain, but that still left them 39 points behind in the manufacturer's classification. With round one of the back-to-back -back tarmac rally safely in the bag, Sebastian Loeb looked in good shape to further reduce Gronholm's lead in the Drivers' Championship on the island of Corsica. But for three day one stages, it was Gronholm who was setting the pace. This is not high on his list of favourite events, but he was leading. And Loeb was not even second on his home rally, as his teammate Danny Sordo was outdoing the reigning world champion as well. Miko Hievenen was seeking to top his fourth place finish in Spain. Here he is on stage three. His pace note was too fast and those Corsican roadside walls did not move. With a wheel missing, his day was over. He would restart but not travel the point scoring positions. But Sebastian Loeb was, as expected, managing to weed his way through the Corsican tarmac mountain roads and was beginning to mount a comeback. On stage four, he went ahead of Sordo into fourth, and on the following stage, he took the lead from Gronholm, and at the end of the opening day, his lead was just under five seconds. Loeb is unbeaten in the last eight pure tarmac rallies, so this was the position we expected to see him in. He was admitting he wasn't finding it easy. In the last service, you told me you were pushing to the max then. Now, how much more can you push? I, I don't think I can push more. Uh, in the afternoon, I was really trying hard in the morning also, but I was a bit less confident with my setting. Uh, now, it was the feeling with the car was a bit better, so it's all good. But what was most important is that Lowe was getting it right, and over the second day, bit by bit, he drew away from the field. Loeb won five of the day's stages, but Gronholm was second on five of them too. So not only was he hanging on to second place, he was also drawing away from Danny Sordo in third. Those two extra points could be very important come the end of the season. While the top places were sorting themselves out, there was an interesting little dispute developing over fifth place between Yanni Matti Latvala and Petter Solberg. Who, although still not happy with his Subaru, was getting through and setting competitive times. And this would become a fight for fourth place when Francois Duval and the OMV Chrono Citroen, who had been putting in another strong performance on the tarmac, retired at the end of day two with electrical problems. Solberg won here amongst a day three rainstorm in 2003. But Lavalette, still just 22, was holding fourth place going into the final day. 
He maintained his advantage of over six seconds through the first two of the day four stages, but on the penultimate stage, Solberg reduced this to 3.9 seconds. Lots of pressure on the young Finn, who must be amongst the candidates to replace Marcus Bronholm in the senior four team, but he responded magnificently, beating Petter by nearly eight seconds on this final test. Malcolm Wilson might be taking note of this performance. Behind Petter, another Subaru, that of Chris Atkinson, was sixth. While Jan Kopecky in seventh showed that he and the Skoda Fabia still have something to offer on tarmac. Danny Sordo has plenty to offer on tarmac too, and he was on his way to third place, despite a few shaky moments on the final day. A good performance from Sordo, but one that may have been disappointing for his Citroen team as he'd failed to beat this man. Marcus Granol would be satisfied with his second place and his total points haul of 14 from Spain and Corsica. But it was a maximum 20 points from these two tarmac events for Sebastian Loeb. He might be in a fight to retain his driver's championship, but he was still definitely the number one on the black stuff. Nine stage wins in all below, on the way to that 23.7 second winning margin. So with three rounds remaining, Gronholm's lead was reduced to just four points. And in the manufacturers, Citroen reduced Ford's lead for the second rally in a row, but they were still 32 points behind. Next season, Suzuki will be appearing in those standings. Of course, come out the debut of the SX4 in the WRC, as the teams sought to get some racing experience under their belt before they enter the championship full-time. Francis Nicola Bernardi was the man at the wheel, and despite retiring with mechanical problems on day one and two, they made it to the end under the Super Rally rules, registering some very useful competitive kilometers. Everybody wanted a piece of the drivers as the WRC arrived in Japan. The passion of the local fans always one of the features of this event. Marcus Gronholm was one of the biggest draws, but his attention would be on making the most of the gravel stages coming up and rebuilding his lead in the championship. Not for the first time this season, though, it was Yari Mati Lavala who was the quickest Ford Focus away from the start line. On what was a cold, misty start to Rally Japan, he led after stage one. But over the following two stages, Gronholm found his rhythm and moved into the lead. And it was all looking good for the big Finn as he entered stage four, the short Rikabetsu test, as Latvala and Miko Hirvonen were both ahead of Sebastian Loeb. But from a position of strength to a position of desperation. The data showed that the championship leader was too quick into that corner. He would lose a minute trying to get out of there. Definitely the wrong time to make a mistake, but worse was to follow. A tree stump hidden in the foliage had damaged his roll cage. It wasn't repairable at service and he would not be able to continue. Do you feel this is the championship over? No. No, no, no. Okay, it, I made it difficult for myself, but uh, it's not over. We have two rallies and uh, if Seb wins here, it's six points. Okay, it's difficult, but it's not over. How upset are you? Just now a little bit, yes. But how much? I don't know. <laughs> a lot, in fact. Yeah.
So Loeb was now in a very strong position to take over the lead in the championship, and he even strengthened his position before the end of day one by going ahead of Latvala into second. Kievanen was still the leader at the end of the opening day, his advantage over Loeb 10.3 seconds. So the two young Ford drivers had a big job to do on day two to help out their colleague and countryman Gronholm. Kievanen had to hold on to the lead and Lavala needed to put pressure on Loeb. But going into stage 13, Lavala was experiencing gearbox problems, which meant he had to use his manual gear shift. That, combined with the slippy conditions caused by overnight rain, proved too much for the young Finn. So Loeb's job was becoming easier and easier, and here he is, following Latvala into stage 13. There seemed to be some debate in the car about what had happened. The only thing that was certain was that he and co-driver Daniel Eleanor were going no further today, and it appeared it was co-driver error. What happened? Asking the co-driver. <laughs> Mistake in the notes, so... Okay, it happens. Uh, he, I went too fast in the corner, so I couldn't do anything. You say a mistake in the notes. That was you making the wrong pace note or the wrong pace note called. Uh, wrong call. Uh, it was good in the in in the pace to, in the notes, but uh, okay, first time in in ten years that he makes a mistake. Maybe not the best time to do it, but it's like this. At the breakfast, I got the info from Timo that Seb is off the road. Yeah, it's uh, again back to what, what it was before the rally. Same, same, uh, same difference. With the WRC's two leading lights out in dramatic style, there was a chance for a number of drivers to make their mark. Miko Hirvonen now had a big lead and was on his way to his second win of the season. Danny Sordo was in second place, which would be his best finish on gravel. Henning Solberg in the Stobart VK Ford Focus would go some way to make up for the disappointment of Latvala's retirement. With his second podium of the season, he was now third. While his teammate, Britain's Matthew Wilson, would get the better of Luis Perez Compank in a fight for fourth position, his previous best placing was eighth. Compank's fifth position was also a career best, and with Federico Villagra coming home in seventh, this was two Munchies Fords in the top eight, a first for the Argentinian team. So many celebrating, but Subaru were not among them. In the home country of the manufacturer, there was more pain than pleasure for them. Chris Atkinson had been second after the opening stage, but his rally was over after this big off on stage six. Look at the damage that tree does to the Subaru. Peter Solberg survived this misjudgment of a tricky crest in stage five. But soon after, he was radioing in to report he had come to a standstill with gearbox problems. While Chevy Ponce was another to get it wrong on the greasy day two stages. <laughs> But where many had failed, Miko Hirvonen had triumphed and tamed what had turned into one of the most difficult rallies for some time. After all what happened, um, you know, it, it's a fantastic result and the drive what I did was exactly like we planned and everything worked properly so uh, first he just wanted to help Marcus then he went off so I needed to fight against Sebastian he made a mistake and then just take be cautious and you know drive through like the conditions are steady so uh, 
I'm happy it's over. <laughs> A great result for Miko, but what was making the headlines was that both Gronholm and Loeb were absent from the final leaderboard. So everything remained the same in the Drivers' Championship after round 14, Gronholm still four points ahead. Ford, who needed to score just five more points than Citroen to take the Manufacturers' Championship here, would have to keep the champagne on ice for a little bit longer. Ireland has a great rally heritage. Winning a place on the WRC calendar is a big deal, and the Irish were determined to make this a rally to remember. It began in Belfast on Thursday night with a super special in the grand surroundings of the Stormont Parliament Building, home to the Northern Ireland Assembly. The highlights of the evening, the head-to-head -head clash between drivers' championship contenders Marcus Gronholm and Sebastian Loeb. And it was the Finn who struck the first blow, beating Lowe by nine tenths of a second. From here, the rally moved to its base at Sligo City in the Irish Republic for the remaining 19 stages, which were situated on both sides of the border. Ireland provided a stunning backdrop for this rally, but it was the narrow, bumpy, muddy and rain-soaked stages that would live in the crew's memories. Many of the leading WRC names came unstuck in these conditions. Henning Solberg gave his temporary co-driver Goran Bergsten a nasty introduction to the WRC with this off on day one. While Chris Atkinson's Subaru also ended up in a roadside hedge. But the biggest casualty was Marcus Gronholm. He had lost the lead to Loeb on the first morning, but was only four seconds behind going into stage four, Loch Gill. But on the wet roads, he slid under braking, sending the car slamming into this stone wall. The damage to the car would force them to retire, while Marcus and co-driver Tim Aratianen were taken to hospital for a precautionary checkup. But the biggest damage would be to their championship hopes. For the second rally running, Loeb had been given a golden opportunity to take over the lead in the Drivers' Championship. Surely he would take it this time. But even the undisputed king of the tarmac was not finding it easy. This, on stage eight, was the second of two overshoots he experienced. His Citroen teammate Danny Sordo was in second place, but he was also having a few wobbles. One of the few to get through day one without incident was Yadi Mati Lavala. He was the leading four driver in third, but he knew these stages had to be respected. The first stage in the morning I had a feeling that it's going to be a long, long day and very difficult, but the confidence was building up uh, step by step and the uh, car has been working really, really well. So it has, been a, it has been a big challenge, but that's what rallying needs to be. Latvala was up to the test, but still well over a minute behind the Citroens going into day two. The 22-year-old Finn was seeking his first podium finish in the WRC and nearly improved to second as the fun and games continued on day two. When Danny Sordo went too wide at this stage 12 corner, he became beached on a rock. With some encouragement from co-driver Mark Marty, they were helped back onto the road by spectators, but not before nearly 30 seconds were lost. But Rally Island was a great leveller, and two stages later, Latvala suffered a similar fate. Losing the 30 seconds he had gained earlier. Behind Latvala, in the absence of Gronholm, Miko Hirvonen was carrying the hopes of the BP4 team, and he was under orders to just get home in the top six, as that was enough for the team to finally claim the manufacturer's title. So it looked like Ford would have something to celebrate at the end of the weekend. But it looked more and more likely that they would be losing the lead in the Drivers' Championship, as Loeb was taking advantage of the problems of those behind him to open up a lead of nearly a minute going into the final day. And by the time he reached the last stage, Mulak Moore, he was in a position where he could probably take in some of the stunning views of the county Sligo coastline.
with Sordo wrapping up second. This was a good weekend for Citroen. Lavala got home in third, claiming his career best finish. Kivanen did his job finishing fourth, while Peter Solberg claimed a satisfactory fifth place, while Guy Wilkes also recorded his best WRC finish in sixth. But Loeb was the winner, and that saw him turn a four-point deficit to Grand Holm in the Drivers' Championship into a six-point advantage. But Miko Hirvonen's fourth place would mean Rally Island would end with a champagne moment for Ford as they claimed their second successive Manufacturers' Championship. I think this one's even more significant to do back-to-back -back victories and, and uh, I think the way that we've done it this year as well and, and the strength that the opposition that we're up against, you know, Sebastian was here for the whole season um, and obviously Danny's they're a very strong combination and to actually <clears throat> manage to do it before the, the final event, it's great in one sense because it's taken the pressure off that the, the guys now can really drive flat out and try and help Marcus. Uh, Get the uh, you know get the win obviously, but and then try and keep Sebastian further back down the field. So after 189 stages totaling 5,000 kilometres, the championship would be decided over 17 stages in the valleys and forests of South Wales, and the crews were greeted by traditional British conditions: rain, mud, fog, and some 100 kilometre per hour winds for good measure. The conditions meant there were plenty of hazards to concern Sebastian Lowe, who just needed to finish fifth to claim his fourth successive driver's title. All Marcus Gronholm could do was make sure he finished in the top two and hope for a low retirement to fulfill his dream of retiring with a third world championship crown. With Loeb and Gronholm preoccupied with each other and the weather, Nico Hirvonen took the opportunity to take an early lead. He made light of these tough conditions to win the first four stages, opening up a gap of 25.6 seconds. Gronholm was second and Loeb was third, so as it stood, the Frenchman was still in control of his destiny. In fourth was Yari Mati Lapala, and he was doing his bit to help out his countryman Gronholm by putting some pressure on third place Loeb. Latvala may only be 22, but this was his sixth start in the British event, and he was hoping for another podium finish to add to the one he achieved in Ireland. But he was one of a number of drivers to fall foul of the conditions when his wipers and demister started to malfunction. And in the night stage that ended day one with his visibility down to practically zero, he was forced to retire. He did return under the restart rules and without the pressure of battling for the top places, he went on to record nine fastest stage times, a sign of what might have been. Latvala may have been attacking the stages, but for our leading contenders, it was a case of defending what they'd got. Kivanen continued to build on his lead through the second day, while Gronholm and Loeb maintained their top three positions. Petter Solberg was fourth. His rally had nearly ended prematurely with this spin on the very first stage. Trying to six right side into Maddox. Five. Six left minus. Extra long. But he survived that and went on to put oh, in one of his speed. and the Subaru Impreza's best performances in some time. Danny Sordo was fifth. He won't have experienced conditions like this too often, but he was giving a very composed performance to round off a successful season for him and co-driver Mark Marty. Chris Atkinson had started strongly before he was slowed by the conditions. He also had problems with his D-mister, but brought his way back up to sixth position, getting past Matthew Wilson on the way. But Wilson, buoyed by two consecutive point-scoring finishes in Japan and Ireland, was not going to give up his place without a fight. He hung on to Atkinson, and when the Australian was bothered by setup problems, the Stobart VK driver surged ahead to make sixth position his.
Somebody who wouldn't be troubling the point scoring places here was the 18 year old Norwegian driver Andreas Mikkelsen. His car was sent into this huge roll after clipping a rock on stage nine. Here it is again from the onboard camera. Mickelson and co-driver Ola Floen walked away unscathed. Meanwhile, Loeb had been ticking off the stages as he got closer to that driver's title. While Gronholm was now looking resigned to the fact that he would have to settle for second place in the Drivers' Championship and also on his last ever event. Although in the very last stage, Kivanen nearly handed him the win when he spun early in this stage. This halved his lead, but he got home safely to record his third win of the season. Gronholm made the finish line without incident, but his career would be ending on a slightly disappointing note. Marcus, the end of your last rally, the end of your last season. Fantastic championship fight, but so near yet so far away. Yeah, okay. I knew when I started this rally that um, it will be difficult, and it, it was difficult. Okay, that's how it is. Uh, Seb took the championship. I made a mistake in Ireland, which cost me probably the, the title, but okay. What can I do? Anyway, quite happy with your career. So, so. Gronholm has had a fantastic season and put Loeb under more pressure than he had been in any of his other championship winning seasons. But yet again, it was the Frenchman who was the season's number one driver. And he'd also equaled Tommy Mackinnon's record of four World Drivers' Championships in a row. And of course, Daniel Eleanor was again the champion co-driver. A great leading present for Citroen team boss Guy Frekelan, who was also retiring. Sebastian, 2007 World Rally Champion and now four consecutive titles. Yeah, it's incredible, huh? When you would think uh, how we started with nothing uh, ten years ago and now it's a uh, four-time world champion. It's, uh, for me, it's incredible. And this year will especially stay a good, very good memory for me because uh, it was a hard battle all the, all the season. A very, very hard battle with uh, with Marcus, and uh, finally we get the championship with only four points lead. It's not the same than with 40 like some years ago. So no, it's really, really good moment. <laughs> Third position then was good enough for Loeb in Wales, but he had notched up eight wins altogether this season. His eventual points total was 116, four more than Gronholm. Mikko Hirvonen ended the season in third, Danny Sordo fourth and Petter Solberg fifth. Ford had of course already wrapped up the manufacturer's title, their final points tally 212. Citroen second here, but it was them who would end the season celebrating, courtesy of Monsieur Loeb. A WRC rally may begin on Friday, but Thursday is just as busy for the drivers. We met up with Ford's Nico Kiernan on the Thursday of Rally Mexico to find out what he got up to. Basically, I just woke up, so uh, of course now Thursday morning we have a shakedown just to go through and test the car that everything is okay and uh, have a test run and get a feeling. Mainly it's just to check that everything is working and uh, just have fun, stay in the car and uh, have a joke with mechanics. So, this is my rally car, the fastest car on the planet. Co driver Jarmo, kind of almost like my husband, spending more time with him than with my uh, fiance back home, which is terrible, but you know, mechanics, they save me so many times. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Ashley, say hi. Hi, how you doing? He's the uh, head mechanic of the car and uh, tries to tell the boys what they have to do and uh, just try, try, but he's in a good job. Basically, 
basically all the thing I found that I could complain. Steering be well, steering wheel to be too low. Imagine that. So uh, quite good job from the board. I'm learning how to change the air filter. It's quite dusty rally, so I might have to clean it between the stages. Yeah, just in case it's uh, we can travel on the uh, filter. Like that. Alright, and that way it's easier to just put this on his chest again, straight in like that. I need to do it like this. Yeah, pretty easy as well. There you go, I broke it. Like and it doesn't matter which. Push, yeah, it doesn't matter where it goes. Yeah. Oh, you put it against your chest like that, that's it. Yeah. That's it. And if you use the two air filters, you, just, you can just bang that one out and get your shoulder back and bang it out. Well, if you bang it, if you want to bang them out, if you're going to clean it, just make sure you get it on the ground. And yeah. Give it one yeah, of them. Get loads. Get loads out here. Yeah. All right. Do you, want me to, do you want me to mark a T on here or something, or an arrow like that, <coughs> an arrow here? So just in case you no, get confused? No, just where the line here, so yeah. that... Okay, we'll do whatever. This, just so you don't get confused with it. Okay. And that's it, mate. It's easy as that, really. It's easy as that. Well, he says it's easy as that. So with the car ready to go for the rally, Miko's next engagement is with the world's press. My name is Mikko Hervonen, we're going to have a rally now in Leon and I'm expecting to have a big fight against everybody, so stay In the end you find a corner what is, when it's not flat and then you start to have moments, so... You know, doing bloody PR all the time, which is fantastic, but okay, sometimes it's a bit too much. Of course, I'm not alone in the car, so I need to introduce my uh, co-driver. Tada! Jarmo Lehtinen. And uh, oh, we need a microphone, we should do a proper kind of interview. So, what do you think about Rally Leon? Rally Leon? Never been there. <laughs> we are in Leon, aren't we? In Mexico, anyway. Go ahead. Yeah, good rally. Nice rally. Really and, looking uh, forward. How do you think you're going you're gonna to do in this rally? I'm going to win it. Oh, you're going to win it? Uh, actually... Uh, there's a challenge. So, freshing up from the shower after the shakedown, so now is the next thing. I need to go to the FIA press and talk about the rally and uh, what I think about it. It shouldn't take that long time. Only thing is that, like in Norway, I just find a good speed and uh, kind of uh, find a little bit more courage. He wants to be a rally driver and a good rally driver, so... When we're off, off duty, he's funny, making jokes all the time. You need to be very, very aware of what he's doing, otherwise you'll be busted. Can you hear me? He's got that very cheeky way with it as well, which is, you know, it's quite refreshing because... Uh, and he, he likes to wind up a lot of the boys in the team, so it's, uh, it's, it's good fun to have around. Well in Mexico last year, can you get better here this year? Yes. <laughs> Autograph signing. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Why didn't you have a This is kind of a tradition in Mexico every year. The start has been in uh, has been in Guanajuato. Organizers they have arranged uh, kind of a bus ride for everybody, and all the drivers we just get in, and uh, it's a really nice place to start the rally. In a way, these they definitely they, these feel a lot longer than actually rally day. They're just smiling and waving and uh, autographing all the time, but part of the job, so I'm not going to complain. Day. Now it's one thing to do again. So back in the bed and get ready for the action. See you tomorrow. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be part of a WRC service group? Working on the car while the clock is counting down. Here's a little taster. 
Hi, my name's Mark and with the aid of this little camera we'll show you what we do on our service. My main responsibilities on this event are to look after the left rear corner on Petra's car, making any adjustments, any changes that the engineers tell us. The service is exciting, it gets your blood pumping, it's the best bit of the rally. Every time the cars come in, it's a lot more exciting, every, every service. We're just about to change the diff, take the differential out, the, the diff guard's out of the way, the protection of the diff guard. We're just going to undo the, the trailing links and the drive shaft, get them out of the way. So we're just about to get the drop link off, ready to get the trailing link out of the way, get the drive shaft out of the way, then tie them up so we can make the diff so the diff comes out easier. That's Carl under there, just done doing the main bolts. There's a few hands in there, making many hands make light work. We've got 30 minutes to do this, but usually we get it done in about 13. The nut gun's off, Sam's in there when the nut gun getting the first nut off. The wire's tied up out of the way. That's it, ready for the diff to come down. Off the prop shaft. Out of the way. In comes a new one. That's it, line it up on the splines on the prop shaft. The diff um, gives the traction to the rear wheels from the gearbox into the differential, through the drive shafts and out to the rear wheels. In go the three through bolts, and they'll go. And then talked up. Andy trying to say hello to his mum, so I hope he gets a mention. That's it, on go the nuts, nut gun up. Then we'll talk them up with the torque wrenches after. There we go, dry shaft going back in now. The dry shaft going back in with their three bolts. Then we can put the trailer, uh, lateral links back on and the drop links. With Andy again, still trying to get a mention to his mum. We're actually changing the damper here. That's it, the damper's about to come out, that's it. Now it comes the damper. Oh, we're going to spring change now. The springs are different. You have harder and softer springs, which obviously give better feel, feel on the car, enabling a, for the rougher and the smoother. Top plate's coming off the top of the damper now. Two bolts hold that plate on. Off comes the top plate, helper spring. And off comes the main spring. Fit the new main spring. It goes, just slips on and sits on a collar and the spacer plate. And then the helper spring, which is a lot softer. Back on with the top plate, which keeps it all in position. Two small bolts. Sometimes you change lots, sometimes you only change it once or twice. It all depends on the conditions. That's the canister, that's the uh, expansion canister with the adjusters in there. That's it. If it goes, the two nuts on the inside will hold that in line it up and it goes make sure you don't damage the pipe when you're fitting it the black pipe that's yeah. a cooler for the rear brakes that's a cooling pipe there's fans in the boot which blow down and cooler rear brakes now we connect the damper back to the upright with the two bolts and talk them up you have to make sure everything's right before it goes out because the speed these things these cars go at uh, you don't want anything going wrong because it's a major consequence if something goes wrong there we go we're just adjusting the platform height now which gives a better feel for the car as well. It's the ride height, the ride height of the car, how, car the, how high the car will be off the road. We're only adjusting it by a few millimetres, but they make all the difference. The drivers have different, they have their own different setups because they have different feels for the car. So that's the locking rings. There's two locking rings on a thread, and they just adjust the platform then. You would just them up and down, up or down. The main ring at the top holds the top plate in, and then the, you've got a locking ring down below so it can't undo. So then you do the job, have a double check round, make sure everything's talked, you haven't forgotten anything. Yeah, there's just one thing to go on at the end, and that's just the wheel. Talk that up, and then we're ready to go. Right, that's better done, and off to the next stage, and that's me done to the next service. A new event for 2007, the Rally Norway came a week after Sweden's traditional snow spectacular and the new winter event didn't disappoint. One of the most testing stages was the 24km mountain. Here on Sunday morning, Marcus Grunholm was hoping to catch rally leader and teammate Mikko Hirvonen and a fresh snowfall meant that snowbanks of up to a metre deep lined most of the route. Classic winter rally conditions then. Grunholm is one of the best in the business on this surface. Ja 
Stop it. Stop it. Neli ja oikein helppo yli nypyn. Seitsemän vasen eri ahdas yli nypyn. Ja oikein jouhe yli nypyn sido. Se kahdeksan oikein jouhe yli nypyn. Seitsemän oikein eri yli nypyn jatkuu oikein. Nopee suppu vasen nopee. Ja oikein täys yli nypyn. Kahdeksan nyppy viis vasen eri miinus. Suppu oikein eri miinus ahdas. Seitsemän. Ja nyppy oikein eri. Kahdeksan ja nyppy vasen eri helppo. Ja nyppy kahdeksan vasen nopee. Viis ja oikee eri pyöree. Viis oikee eri ehkä pyöree ja oikee eri helppo yli nypyn. Seitsemän huomio nyppy vasen pitkä hidas. Kahdeksan ja oikee täys yli nypyn. Yhdeksän huomio. Nyppy yksi ja oikee hidas. Kaks ja vasen nopee. Yhdeksän ja oikee hidas ahdas silta. Hidas ahdas silta. Ja vasemmalle oikee hidas. Seitsemä. Vasen pitkä eri ehkä pyöree. 140. Oikee täys yli nöpön sisältä. 200. Oikeelle oikee pitkä eri pyöree. 8. Vasen eri pyöree pidä sisällä. 150. Oikee täys yli nöpön. 120. Nyt, nyt oikea laita vasen täys. 200. Hae oikee eri. 200. Vasen eri tiukka kirraa suppuun. Ja vasen täys. Oikee täys. Ja nyppy täys. 120. Vasen eri ahdas lopussa. 200. Oikee täys. 120. Oikee eri pyöree. 250. Oikee pitkä eri, ehkä ehkä pyöree ahdas. 200. Oikeelle suppu ja vasen eri miinus ahdas. Miinus ahdas. 250. Oikee eri yli nypyn ahdasta. Eri ahdas. Ja oikee eri helppo yli nypyn. Kahdeksan. Nyt oikee nopee kirraa. Ja vasen eri pyöree sumppu. Huomio. Oikee eri kaks vasen tosi hidas pitkä. Vaseri miinus, suppu. Oikein eri jouhe yli nypyn. Kahdeksan oikealle vaseri miinus, suppu. Ja oikein eri jouhe, ahdas. Kahdeksan vasemmalle suppu. Oikein eri miinus, kirraa kirraa. Ja vasen nopee. Seitsemän oikein eri miinus, kirraa kirraa silta. Viis ja oikee nopee kirraa. Vasen eri lyhyt. Seitsemän. Vasen nopee. Oikee pitkä eri tiukka kirraa. Vasen eri. Jatkuu vasen eri. Miinus. Miinus. Sata. Ja nyppy oikee täys. 140. Hae oikee eri. Viis. Ja vasen eri sisältä. 120. Oikee. Eri, viis, vasen eri, miinus kirraa. Kahdeksa ja oikee täys, 250. Vasen eri pyöree, neljä ja vasen eri, tiukka kirraa. Seitsemä ja oikee eri, miinus kirraa. Sata. Oikein 
Jokeri, tiukka sumppu, tiukka sumppu neljä, vasemmalle silta oikein nopee. Korjaako ensi vuotta vai? Ei, seitsemän, vaseri jouhe. Seitsemän, oikein pitkä eri tiukka kirraa. Tätä ei ajeta. Seitsemän, vaseri miinus yli nypyr. Miinus yli nypyr. Seitsemän, ja oikein eri sumppu, vasen eri yli nypyr. Seitsemän, on nyt oikein hidas, älä kiri sisällä. Nyt oikein hidas, älä kiri sisällä. Sata, ja vasen nopee kirraa. Nopee kirraa. 150, oikein eri jouhe yli nypyr, ahdasta, 100, vasen eri, 7, oikein nopee, nopee, 5, ja vasen eri, ahdas, sumppu, oikein eri, pyöree, 7, nyppy, vasen eri, miinus, sumppu, 3, vasen nopee yli nypyr, sumppu, nopee yli nypyr, sumppu, oikein eri, 4, vasen hidas silta, ja oikein nopea ahdas kirraa. Kahdeksan. Oikein täys yli nypyr. 120. Oikein täys. 150. Oikein eri tiukka. Jatkuu oikein eri pyöreä viisi ja vasen nopee. Kahdeksan. Ja nyppy kaksi vasen nopea ahdas. Toistan vasen nopea ahdas. Vasen eri pyöree, seitsemän oikein eri jouhe, seitsemän oikein eri paha sumppu, 200. Oikein eri vähän ahdas, 260. Vasen hidan risteys. Ja vasen täys. Ja oikein eri jouhe, sumppu, meillä ei tule väliaikoja. Ja vasen eri helppo. Kahdeksan, vasen eri pyöreen, tosi ahdas. Ja vasen eri jouhe yli nypyr, viis vasen eri. Sata, nyppy vasen eri jouhe, ahdas. Sata, oikein nopee. Ja nyppy täys. Sata. Oikein eri ahdas yli nypyr. Eri ahdas yli nypyr. 150. Ja vasen nopee kirraa. Nopee kirraa. Ja nyppy oikee täys. 100. Nyppy oikee eri tiukka. Nyppy 120. Ja vasen eri suppu. Toista eri suppu. Ja oikee eri jouheen. 9. Pitkä nyppy 5. Vasen nopee kirraa. Ja nyppy oikein täys. Ja nyppy oikealle viisi oikein pitkä eri tiukka kirraa, kirraa. Ja nyppy vasen eri miinus kirraa, kirraa. Miinus kirraa, kirraa. Sata. Ja vasemmalle vasen eri miinus kirraa. Oikein nopee. Miinus kirraa ja oikein nopee. Ja oikein pitkä eri helppo. Ja nyppy vasen pitkä eri kirraa. Nyppy vasen pitkä eri kirraa. Ja oikein pirun pitkä nopea risteys kirraa. Pirun pitkä nopea risteys kirraa. Ja vasen täys. 120 vasen hidan risteys kirraa. No, aika hieno tie, hei. No. 130. Oikein täys. 120. Oikein eri jouhe yli nyppy 6. Ja oikein hidan risteys. Jatkuu oikein eri. 7. Ja pitkä nyppy vasen eri jouhe pidä sisällä. 120. Oikein pitkä eri jouhe kirraa eriks. 150. Ja hämäävä nyppy vasen eri suppu, oikein eri ahdas ja vasen pitkä nopee. Ja vasen täys. 150. Hae oikein eri, eri ylinypyn. 5 ja vasen pitkä eri. 
kahdeksan. Oikein miinus, tosi ahdas kirraa. Ja vasen eri helppo. Viis, oikein eri tiukka suppu, vasen eri miinus suppu. Ja oikein nopea kirraa. Vasen eri helppo. 130. Vasen eri ahdas. 150. Vasen eri tiukka suppu. Oikee eri pidä sisällä. Vasen eri helppo. 8. Vasen pitkä eri tiukka kirraa yli nypyn. Ja oikealle oikein nopea silta älä. Toista heti tulee oikealle oikein nopea silta älä. Kahdeksan. Ja vasen kidaristeys. Kidaristeys. Yhdeksän. Oikein eri helppo sumpuun. Sata. Neppy oikea laita vasen täys. 120. Neppy oikea laita kolme ja vasen eri tiukka silta. 200. Ja nyppy vasemmalle ja nyppy oikee eri pidä sisällä suppu. Vasen eri. Kahdeksan. Ja vasen eri helppo. Kahdeksan. Oikee piru pitkä eri kirraa. 150. Ja nyppy oikee täys. Kahdeksan. Nyt täys, 250, vasen täys, 150, vasen eri suppu, oikee eri ahdas kirraa, Toista vasen eri suppu ja oikee eri ahdas kirraa, 150, ja nyppy vasen laita täys, 8, oikee eri tiukka yli nypyn ahdasta, 8, ja vasen täys, Kahdeksan, haivas eri, ehkä pyöree yli nypyn. Ehkä pyöree yli nypyn sata. Ja vasen eri. Oikein täys yli nypyn, pidä sisällä. 120. Ja oikein eri jouhe yli nypyn, ahdas. Vasen eri jouhe. Seitsemän, oikein täys. Kahdeksan, vasen täys. Ja oikein täys, 120. Ja nyppy vasen täys, maalin asti. Marcus, the last split I have, it's point six between you and Mikko. Are you driving to those splits or are you trying to just push him? I have no splits. <laughs> oh, no. It's okay, we are driving. Seems to be very similar pace to Mikko though. Yeah, we have the same car and same colors on the car, so it seems to go the same speed. <laughs> Turned to the WRC after a six year absence. Marta to move south saw the tricky gravel roads of the Algarve play host to the New Look event. Sebastian Loeb began stage 14 aiming to secure back to back gravel wins in the C4 after winning Rally Mexico three weeks earlier. This is the 18 kilometers of Lule Almodovar, a challenging mix of fast and medium paced corners in the undulating countryside to the north of host city Faro. As a brand new event and a brand new stage, listen out for low points with his pace notes. The driver, Daniel Ellen. Et gauche, et long droit ferme 140 de mon tour, ouvre et ferme 130 plus 1000 ans sur frein, gauche 120. Et droite 130 plus plus, 80 mètres, ciel sur 20 mètres, droite 140 de mon court frein, gauche 140 de moins plonge, sur droite 140 de mon long en ciel, 180 mètres, gauche 140 de moins, 
65 km, km, donc si elle faudra 140 000 en cachet frein, pour 60 m, 220 000 millions. 60 000 en cachet frein, 60 mètres, 220 000 millions, 50 mètres, droite sur plus tard, et droite à fond, sur frein, pour gauche 120 gestes, et gauche 120 plus, rasé en gauche 3 plus, 100 mètres, et gauche 120 cornes sur frein, pour 40 mètres, gauche 100 plus. 50 mètres, gauche frein pour droite 120 moins. Sur gauche 130, frein pour 40 mètres, droite 50 épingle. Et sur gauche 60 plus long tard. Et droite à fond, 50 mètres. Droite 120 bon. 200 mètres. Gauche 120 millions. Droite 130 pontard, sur gauche ancienne. Et droite 130 plus plus millions pas corps. Et attention, gauche ferme 130 plus plus millions ancienne. 130 mètres. Gauche 130 au moins. Ou mais ferme 120 pontard. Ou mais ferme 120 pontard et droite 110 plus de millions. 80 mètres. Si elle va très léger gauche. Et droit de frein pour gauche 120 bon millions. Et droit 123 tard frein pour gauche 110. Sur droite I. Sur gauche 140 moins long tard ou le faire léger. 130 mètres. Attention, droit 143 vers 110 millions. Et gauche 110 gravier. Sur droite 120 plus. Ouvre, 150 mètres, tienne sur 20 mètres, droit 134 moins frein, pour gauche 110 millions. Sur l'autre droit, on perd de 130 moins. Ouvre, 100 mètres, double attention, droit 140 moins frein, tienne frein pour 50 mètres, droit 120 moins millions. Sur double attention. Gauche à fond, ouvre sur ciel, pour droite 147, ferme 120 moins. Sur gauche, et attention, droite ferme de 100. Ferme 120 moins. Sur gauche, attention, droite ferme de 100. 130 mètres. Gauche 60 sur fond. Ouvre. Et gauche 140 plus solo. Et droite 158, ferme 140 moins de corde. Sur gauche, il pas corde. Ouais. Gauche, il pas corde, sur ciel du droit. 100 mètres, droite à fond. Gauche, 150 mètres. Droite, il pas corde. Sur gauche, il sur droite à fond. Sur frein, pour 80 mètres, attention, gauche, il pas corde. Sur droite, sur plus long tard. Donc tard et gauche 110 millions. Sur droite 130 moins. Ouvre sur frein pour 60 mètres. Attention, droite 10 épingle. 50 mètres. Gauche 80 moins millions et 3. Et droite 30, 90 plus sur pas corde. Et droite 10 sur attention, gauche 132. 34 mètres plus. 100 mètres, gauche en même plus celui de coupe et 3. Gauche en même plus celui de et 3 ou pas long sur droite 80. Droite 80 et gauche 100 plus. Sur droite 120 ancienne et attention, droite 100 plus long. Et si elle vers droite 20, gauche 100 plus. Si elle vers droite 20, gauche 100 plus. Sur droite à fond ancienne, sur gauche à fond ancienne. Et si elle tout droit, sur gauche pas tout droit sur plus jette. Gauche pas tout droit sur plus jette. Et poste 4 tout droit. Et attention, si elle prend pour 60 mètres, poste 130 millions. Ouvre sur poste à fond. 150 mètres. Droite 110 plus dévers. Droite 110 dévers, 60 mètres. Droite 120 bon dévers. Et poste 60 plus pas corde. 
4 mètres, 3 de 4 mètres d'ISO, 100 mètres, 330 plus, sinon ancienne sur attention 40 mètres, au 100 plus. Sur le droit de 230 déverrentiel sur frein, au 50 mètres, au 100 plus. 80 mètres, 320 plus déver, ouvre, et 320 plus de minon et 3 pas corps. Soit 100 mètres, 210 minon. Et droit de 80 moins pierre. 100 mètres, ciel droit, et ciel vers léger droit sur frein. Gauche 157, ferme 120 points après ciel. Et attention, droite 110 sur ciel. 155, c'est vraiment le bon. Droite 110 sur gauche à fond. Sur celle qui droit deux fois, sur attention, gauche 143, pas de droite à corde. Pour droite 50 épingles. 100 mètres. Gauche au standard. Et droite 100 millions des verts. Droite 100 millions des verts sur gauche 110 millions. Sur droite 100 plus. Ouvre en ciel, 100 mètres, ciel, pour attention, pour 143, ferme 120, moins 4, 343, ferme 120, sur Cauchy, et pour 5 points, tout droit, et attention, en frein, 40 mètres, 230 points, tout droit, 100 mètres, 240 points, tout droit, 300 points, 100 mètres, 320 plus, et attention, Gauche ferme 110 ancienne, sur droitier, sur gauche 140 au moins, sur gauche à fond, et gauche 140 au moins, sur droite ferme 140 au moins ancienne, et attention, gauche ferme 150 mètres derrière, gauche 120 plus, gauche ferme 150 mètres derrière, gauche 120 plus, et droite 120 moins millions, 140 mètres, attention, devant arbre, gauche 140 au moins des vergettes, et toute l'attention, Gauche frein en ciel pour 50 mètres, 310 plombs. 70 mètres. Gauche en compte au pont des verts. 80 mètres. Droite ferme 130 cordes. Sur attention, gauche en compte au frein pour 40 mètres. Gauche 100 plus. Sur droite 100. Et gauche 60 plus. Sur droite 100 plus, Milon. Et gauche 90 points. Sur droite à fond tourne, sur gauche 110 et droit. Sur gauche 110 et droit sur droite à fond et sur gauche ferme 80 moins. Et attention ciel pour droite 80 moins. Et gauche 130 moins. Sur droite à fond. Sur gauche ferme 130 moins. Sur droite à fond moins. Sur droite 120 plus. Sur 120 plus. Sur 30 mètres. Et attention gauche ferme 120 plus. Sur droite 120 plus. Sur gauche, frein pour ciel, pour droite, en même plus. Milon, les ciels du droit, les droites de 130 points. Sur gauche, sur attention, piège, droite 143, frein, sur gauche 130. Sur droite 130 points, ouvre, et vers léger, sur gauche 130 cours. Sur droite, sur frein, pour 60 mètres, gauche 60. Sur droite, sans plus. Mouvement ciel et ferme 130 pots. Les droitiers, attention, l'ancienne frein pour derrière, hein, gauche en 20 plus milon. Gauche en 20 milon, on ouvre long. Les droites 130 plus de coups rejette. Et ciel sur gauche en 30 milon. Et droite 120 moins milon. Sur attention, gauche frein pour 40 mètres, gauche 80 moins long. Et attention, ciel, moins 4. Au droit 135 de pont, ferme 110. Au droit 120 pour cours. Et ciel pour gauche 137 plus plus, ferme 120 frein pour droit 100 plus. Pour droit 100 pour droit 110. Et des droites de 100 millions. 400 mètres. Gauche vers gauche. Et frein en ciel vers gauche. Pour droit 130 de pont. Et frein en ciel vers gauche pour droit 130 de pont. 150 mètres, gauche ferme 130 de pont, pas corde. Sur droite à fond millions ciel. Sur gauche ferme 140 millions après ciel. Et frein au poteau. Gauche 147 moins ferme 120 bon. Gauche 147 moins ferme 120 bon. Et gauche ferme 100 plus. Gauche ferme 100 plus et droite 110 
depuis 6000 ans. Ouh, mais comme ça, même plus 6000 ans. C'est encore plus 6000 ans. Sur 330 plus sur frein. Donc 70 mètres, on va faire 80. Sebastian in the first stage on the final day. That's another four seconds quicker than Marcus, so just watching his splits and just keeping ahead of him. Yeah, just uh, don't want to, to be especially on, in head uh, of him in the stage, but I don't want to lose my 40 seconds, so I was driving like I feel, no, no risk, and uh, I think Marcus was not pushing so hard, so okay. He said there's no need for him to drive fast because you're so far in front. Good, uh, good idea. We join Miko Hirman and here at the start line of one of rallying's classic stages, Rally Finland's on Empire. For the first time in three years, the stage has been restored to its full length of 33 kilometers. It's one of the fastest stretches of road in the World Championship. And with countless crests and jumps, Kivlin's Ford Focus is in the air as much as it's on the ground. The pace notes for Yamo Leighton and Hirnum begins the stage just 6.3 seconds behind his compatriot Marcus Granholm. And watch out for some wild moments as the Finn seeks to close the gap. Ja nyt me keskeltä täys neljä, oikein eri tiukka, heti vasen täys yli nyppy, kaksi lyhyt oikein eri. Heti lyhyt vasen eri yli nyppy, menee ja käännä kahdeksan, vaan lyhyt oikein täys miinus yli nyppy sisältä. Sido vähän, ja vasen eri kirjaa nopeasti yli kahden nypyn. Neljä, oikein eri aukee yli nypyn. Jatkuu oikein täys yli nypyn keskeltä, kolme, varo, vaan nyppy keskeltä, oikein eri jarru kolme, oikein hidas, kivi sisällä. Ja nyt voi sanoa, että kaksi oikein koo kivi sisällä käännä sumppuun. Ja nyt voi oikein laittaa vasen täys. Ja huomio huomio seitsemän. Nyt keskeltä sidon vähän. 120. Nyt voi oikein laittaa täys. Seitsemän, kuusi, täys, miinus viisi. Lyhyt oikein loiva. Huomio huomio neljä. Nyt keskeltä sido. Ja oikein eri aukea yli kuin jarru neljä. Lyhyt on nopea piukka käännä. Seitsemän. Pitkä oikein eri kirraa vähän. Ja aukea yli nykyyn jarru kuus. Pitkä vasen hidas piukka sisältä kirraa. Vähän seitsemän, oikein K, ei sisältä kirraa, viis, oikein nopea menee ja aukee, pidä viis, pitkä vasen hidas, mene sisältä, kirraa vähän yli nypyn, 180. Vähän pitkä nyppy keskeltä, oikein loiva heittää, tarkka, jarru kolus, vasen K, kirraa pahasti yli nypyn. Keskeltä jatkuu vasen K, mene sisältä, kolme. Lyhyt oikee, loiva yli nyppy keskeltä, jarru neljä, pitkä oikee, hidas, aukee. Seitsemän. Pitkä oikee, koo yli kahden nypyn, aukee. 180. Yli. Tupua nyppy täys, 150. Oikee, loiva, käännä kuus. Nyppy täys, ja nyppy täys. Nyppytäys 150. Haipa sen loiva yli nyppy keskeltä menee ja aukee. Sidon vähän ja nyt oikee täys aukee yli nyppy heittää vähän. 160. Huomio huomio varo oikee loiva menee ja käännä. Jarru 150. Vasen oikee vasen. Tosi hyvä shikani. Ja nyppytäys. 150. Vasen täys yli nyppy 120. 
Nyppi vasen loima tiukka sisältä. Seitsemän, nyppi vasen laita täys, kous, oikein kouli, nyppi mene, oikein kouli, nyppi pivi sisällä, käännä. Sata, pitkä nyppi, nyppi oikein täys, kahdeksan, huomio, huomio, nyt oikein laita, pitkä vasen loima kirkkaa, yli nyppi keskellä, jarrupuus, vasen hidas, rumpu sisällä. Sata. Ja nyppi täys. Ja vasen täys, yli nyppi 150. Nyppi vasen laita neljä, lyhyt oikein K, kolme, vai nyppi pitkä oikein nopee mene sisältä. Pitkä oikein nopee mene sisältä, aukee, kuusi, vasen täys, aukee yli kahden nypyn, kahdeksan yli, nyppi keskeltä kaksi, vasen nopee, kirraa vähän, heti, nyppi oikein laita täys, seitsemän, huomio, huomio, lyhyt vasen eri yli, nyppi heittää, jarru viisi, oikein hidas sisältä. Neljä, nyppi vasen laita oikein täys, sata, huomio huomio, nyppi oikein laita kaksi, pitkä vasen hidas kirraa vähän. Ja oikein loiva, kahdeksan. Haipa se eri aukeudu, nyppi sisältä heittää, kuus, oikein tuo tiukka, kivi sisällä, kirraa vähän. Sata. Oikea, lyhyt oikea loiva, tiukka suppu, seiska, lyhyt oikea loiva, yli nyppu, mene suppu, viis, huomio, huomio, nyt on oikea laita, jarru, viis, vasen hidas. Ja nyt täys, seitsemän. Lyhyt oikea täys, yli nyppu, keskeltä, kuus. Lyhyt oikea eri aukea, yli nyppu, mene ja käännä. Ja nyt vasen laita täys, kahdeksan. Hai oikea täys, miinus, yli nyppu, pidä. Ja lyhyt vasen loiva, yli nyppu, käännä, paha suppu. Sama kolme kyt. Pitkä on se täys kesken, viis, vasen loiva yli nypy käännä, sata, huomio, huomio, haa oikea loiva, tiukka yli nypy heittää, sata, pitkä vasen loiva, ja nyt kun vasen laita, sido, neljä, lyhyt oikee K. Ja oikee täys, viinis aukee yli nypy keskeltä, kuus, ja nyt oikee laita täys, kuus, pitkä vasen koo yli kahden nypyn, heittää ja aukee, neljä, huomio, huomio, varo, pitkä oikee täys, ja vasen täys, miinus yli nypy keskeltä, sido, tähän, Kuus, pitkä oikee eri, kuus, pitkä vasen eri yli nyppi kirraa, jarru neljä, vasen tosi hidä, risteys. Ja oikee täys yli nyppi sata, vasen täys aukee yli nypyn, ja oikee täys yli nyppi kaheksan, nyppi täys neljä, nyppi oikee laita täys seitsemän, pitkä vasen loiva tiukka sisältä. Jatkuu nyppi vasen laita täys viis, oikee K, yli nyppi mene sisältä käännä, siis K yli nyppi mene sisältä käännä, sata, vasen eri, käännä, seitsemän, oikee eri mene ja aukee yli nyppyn, ja tuko nyppi täys, kaksataa, oikee eri, sata, ja vasen täys, kaksataa, oikee täys, Keskeltä sata, hae oikee täys, miinus, yli nyppy keventää kahdeksan, huomio, huomio, vasen täys, aukee yli kahden nyppy keskeltä, jarru seitsemän, pitkä vasen koo yli nyppy, mene ja käännä. Seitsemän, hae pitkä oikee loiva yli nyppy, sata, nyppy vasen laita täys, neljä, nyppy täys, sata, hae vasen täys, miinus, yli nyppy sido vähän. Ja aukee, jatkuu vasen täys, aukee yli nypyn pidä, ja huomio huomio kahdeksan, oikee koo, mene kirraa yli nypyn. Kahdeksan, nyppu oikee laita kaks, vasen loiva, katsotaan kymmenen, huomio huomio, varo nyppu oikee laita, jarru kaks, vasen oikee vasen tosi hyvä shikaani. Ja vasen loiva, 120. Hae oikee eri, aukee vähän yli nypyn, 120. Pitkä oikee täys yli kahden nypyn, kirraa. Viis, nyppy oikee laita täys, seitsemän. Vasen täys miinus, jatkuu vasen täys miinus yli nypyn keskeltä, jatkuu. Vasen täys miinus sisältä aukee, 150. Hae lyhyt oikee loiva, tiukka yli nypyn, käännä kivi sisällä. Ja nyppy täys sata, huomio huomio, hae lyhyt oikee eri yli nypyn, mene ja tarkka, seitsemän. Vasen täys aukee yli nypy, pidä seitsemän, oikee eri yli nypy keskeltä, jarru viis, pitkä oikee nopee, mene kirraa vähän ja aukee yli kahden nypyn, seitsemän. Vasen nopee tiukka yli nypy kolme, vasen hidas kivi sisällä. Ja oikee loiva, neljä, 
Tämä on oikein tuo kirjaudutettu keskeltä. Heti nyt kun se täys miinus heittää. Tässä ottaa. Hän nyt oikein laittaa täys. Ja pitkä vasen loita kirraa ja aukee yli. Nyt kun jatkaa pitkä vasen täys. 150. Pitkä nyppu keskeltä oikee täys. 100. Tämä on oikein eri. Mene yli kahden nypyn. Kirraa vähän ja aukee. Jatkuu oikee täys. Aukee yli nypyn. Kous, hän nyt keskeltä, sido vähän ja oikee loiva, sata. Hän vasen eri kirjaa vähän yli nyt, kun heittää, 150. Oikee eri mene ja pidä heti nyt vasen täys, aukee yli nyt, kun heittää. 120, nyt vasen täys yli nyt, kun viis, nyt oikee laita täys, seitsemän vasen eri keskeltä, jarru kuus, vasen nope tiukka sisältä. Ja oikee täys, 180. Oikee eri mene sisältä, tarkka ja vasen täys, kuus. Oikee täys miinus, heittää vähän ja vasen täys, pidä. Ja pikku nyt, pitkä nyt, pyrit oikein leuva piukka sisältä käännä. 150, vasen eri mene sisältä käännä. Ja pitkä oikee täys yli nyt, kuus. Nyt keskeltä sido ja vasen eri yli nyt mene ja pidä. Viis, oikee eri sisältä aukee. Seitsemän, pitkä nyt oikee laita täys. Kuus, vasen loiva tiukka sisältä, kivilinjalla käännä, 150, huomio, huomio, varo, hae oikein, kolo, jarru, heti nyt vasen laita jarru, oikein vasen tosi hidas, shikaani. Ja nyt oikein laita. Vasen loiva, jarru, nyt oikein hidas, mene sisältä. Kuus, oikein täys, sata, hae nyppy keskeltä, vasen kolo, mene sisältä, kirraa vähän. Sata. Huomio, huomio. Nyt kun vasen laita. Kolme. Oikein hyvä hittää takaviikko. Viis. Vasen nopee. Ja oikee taas aukee yli nypyn. Siis vasen nopee. Ja oikee taas aukee yli nypyn. 150. Oikee täys yli nypyn. Seitsemän. Huomio, huomio. Lyhyt vasen eri. Jarru neljä. Vasen nopee. Varo sisään. 120. Pitkä oikee täys, miinus, kirra, kirra, sata, huomio, huomio, oikee eri, ja lyhyt vasen jarrukat, oikee, tosi hyvä risteys. 300. Hae oikee täys, miinus, yli nypyn, viis. Vasen H sisältä, sata. Nyppy sido, vasen tuo kirra vähän ja pidä, oikein nopea käännä kivilinjalla. Jatkuu, pitkä oikein eri aukee. Kolme, vasen nopea tiukka sisältä, neljä, nyppy täys koos, vasen täys miinus, 110. Lyhyt oikein eri yli nyppy käännä soppuun, 130. Vasen täys yli nyppy neljä, nyppy täys ja lyhyt oikein täys miinus yli nyppy heittää, jatkuu oikein vasen täys miinus, huomio huomio koos. Kymmenen lyhyt vasen eri, jarru viis, vasen oikee koo sisältä, urat, kirraa vähän, huomio huomio kahdeksan, oikee hidas sisältä, käännä. Ja lyhyt vasen loipa yli nypyn, koos, vasen tosi hidas, aukee yli nypyn. Seitsemän, nyppy täys, hop. Vasen koo kirraa vähän yli nypyn ja lyhyt oikee eri mene sumppuu kivi sisällä. Kous, oikee loiva tiukka yli nypyn ja vasen loiva yli nypyn sido vähän ja aukee. Ja nyppy oikee koo, jarru, vasen nopee, aukee yli nypyn, pikku sumppu, viis, vasen täys miinus, seitsemän, lyhyt vasen eri mene sisältä 120, lyhyt vasen eri kivi sisällä. Heti oikee täys yli nypyn, kahdeksan. Nyt lyöpä se eri mene sisältä, heti oikee eri, jatkoa oikee eri mene, sata. Oikee täys, huomio huomio, kuus, kivu pitkä vasen, koo yli kahden nypyn. Aukee viis. Nyt oikee laita, sido vähän. Vasen eri kolme, nyt pitäis kolme, huomio huomio, varo, nyt vasen laita, jarru neljä, oikee hidas kirraa pahasti kivi sisällä. Viis. Oikee täys yli nypyn, kuus. Lyhyt vasen täys yli nyppy seitsemän. Nyt täys seitsemän, huomio huomio, varo lyhyt vasen eri yli nyppy jarru kolme. Vasen hidas tiukkaa. Katsotaan kymmenen. 
Ja nyt kun Jarru kaksi, se tosi hidas. Ja oikein nopea aukeaa yli nykyyn käännä. 180. Nyt täys neljä, lyhyppä sen täys yli nykyyn. Ja oikein loiva yli nykyyn kahdeksan, pitkällä se hidas puhka yli kahden nykyyn aukee. Neljä. Oikein hidas yli nykyyn heittää. Neljä. Oikein täys miinus aukee yli nykyyn seitsemän. Huomio huomio oikee nopee. Jarru kolme, pasen hidas tiukka käännä. 150. Pasen hidas tiukka sisältä. Heti lyhyt oikee eri. Viis. Pasen hidas yli nykyyn sisältä aukee. Neljä. Pasen hidas pidä. Ja oikee hidas tiukka kivi sisällä. Viis. Nyt täys sata, huomio, huomio, oikein tosi hidas menee, VC. Puus. Vasen loiva sisältä, oikein täys sata, pikku nyppu täys sata, viiskyt. Vasen loiva sisältä käännä, sata, viiskyt. Vasen eri kääntä, kivilinjalla, sata. Oikein kun tiukka, kivilinjalla, viis, huomio, huomio, oikein eri menee. Jarru huis, pitkä vasen, tosi hidas. Viis. Lyhyt vasen, ja oikein tosi hidas risteys menee. 150. Huomio, huomio. Hae vasen koo yli, tiukka yli nypyn, kirraa vähän. Jatkuu. Vasen täys. Ja oikee loima kirraa lyhyeksi eri yli nypyn. Ja pitkä vasen täys kiinnys pitää. Ja nyppy. Oikee täys keskeltä kahdeksan. Oikee täys miinus ja vasen täys. Pitkä oikee täys yli nypyn kirraa. Ja maali. Oltiin ensimmäisessä yksi eelle ja toisessa tasoilla, tasoissa. Ja löyppiä ollaan oltu koko ajan neljä tai kolme eelle. Huppuja, joo. Mikko, 0.7 seconds quickest on that stage, but a big moment we hear. No, there was many big moments. I was pushing a little bit too hard, and it wasn't the perfect stage, but quite scary. Bloody hell. You love Onion Pollo. Do you love it as much when you're taking so many risks? No, it's not the most enjoyable stage. You have to be, you have to take so big risks all the time. That's, it's amazing. The production WRC is represented by drivers from 20 different countries. This League of Nations use near identical production cars modified only to improve their safety. This season's championship consisted of eight rounds visiting four different continents, with each driver nominating six rallies on which to score points. Reigning champion Nasser al was amongst this season's hot shots, alongside 2005 champion Toshi Arai and two times British champion Mark Higgins. Sweden provided the first round of the 2007 championship and saw Christian Solberg take the early lead with ease, but on leg two he'd be caught out by the Swedish Forests and have to settle for third place. Allowing Juho Hannan to take his maiden victory. But just hours after the podium, he'd be disqualified due to a technical violation and the 10 points given to wildcard Oscar Spedland. Mexico would again see Christian Solberg come home in third, proving himself as a driver to be reckoned with. Japan's Toshirai was also back to form, taking second place. But it was Mark Higgins who had dominated the field, leading from start to finish. He crossed the finish line to collect his first win of the season. Okay, 
round three in Argentina, and Hanninen was back, this time demonstrating his natural pace and ability, collecting six points in the process. Calm considered and driving to a championship point scoring strategy, Arai would once again finish in second. But for the second time this year, the champagne would go to another local wildcard, now Munchies Ford World Rally Team driver Federico Villagra. Despite taking an early lead on the Acropolis Rally, Andreas Eigner would suffer through a puncture on leg one, but would come from behind to take second. The weekend's battle for supremacy, however, was between Hannanen and Arai. Matching the Subaru driver's pace throughout, Hannanen began leg two just 4.6 seconds away from the rally leader. But this is a cruel sport, and a deluge of mechanical problems saw the thin retire. Allowing Arai to collect his first win of the season and consolidate an already commanding lead at the top of the championship table. In New Zealand, Hanneman was going well again, briefly moving past leader Arai until first a puncture and then two rolls in the same stage on day two saw him fall out of contention. After a ride drop back following a puncture, Niall McShay had led for much of the event and held a commanding advantage of nearly a minute going into the final day. However, an inspired performance from a ride over the final two legs saw him storm up from 11th to 2nd. And on the penultimate stage of the rally, he edged past McShay to claim his second consecutive win and put himself in a dominant position in the title race. 303. Going into his home rally in Japan, Arai needed a win or a second place finish to claim the title. He was leading the rally early on, but it all went horribly wrong on stage seven. 16. Oh. With Arai out of the point scoring places, it provided his two remaining championship rivals a lifeline. His closest challenger, Mark Higgins, though, was driving with a recently fractured collarbone and needed to finish in fifth. Well, Gabriel Pozzo, who had been steadily adding to his points tally since his first event in Argentina, needed a win. However, after a rye went off, his compatriot Julio Natahara soon followed, leaving Pozzo to inherit the victory and the ten points he needed to keep his title hopes alive. It looked as though Mark Higgins, meanwhile, would fall just short. He finished the rally in sixth, but a post-event exclusion for Armindo Arojo saw the bridge promoted to the fifth spot he needed, and suddenly with Arai missing the final two rounds, the championship was game on. Arriving at the inaugural rally, Ireland Pozzo needed a win and a second from the final two rounds, and Higgins needed two wins on events in which he had a lot of local knowledge. The British driver wasted little time getting himself into the lead on the treacherous Irish tarmac, pulling out an advantage of a minute. But all his hard work would go to waste on the final stage of leg two. Armindo Arojo was fighting for top spot with Niall McShay. When a dramatic roll on day three ended the Portuguese driver's best run of the season. This allowed local star and 2004 champion McShay to claim a popular victory on the first running of his home event. And importantly for Gabriel Pozzo, the retirement of Higgins and Arojo elevated him to second, keeping his slender championship hopes alive. Onto the season finale at a wet Wales Rally GB. If Pozzo could win the rally, the title would be his. He was up against some tough opposition, though, with local star Mark Higgins fighting guest entries Guy Wilkes and Gwyneth Evans for the British title on the same weekend. 
Pozzo gave it a go. He was up to sick by the second afternoon. His rally and his title hopes, though, would end on stage five when he slid off the road. Guy Wilkes would claim victory on his PWRC debut and with it securing the national championship. But back in Japan, Toshi Arai, who was following the progress of the rally, knew that a second PWRC title was his. After eight gruelling rounds then, Toshi Arai claimed the title by nine points from Pozzo after his retirement in Wales. Higgins finished third with McShay fourth, despite only competing on three events. Age 28 and under and using two-wheel drive cars, the FAA Juniors showcases the sport's youngest stars and is a recognised pathway to the WRC. The 2007 championship consisted of seven European rounds. The drivers nominated six rallies in which to score points. Amongst the 19 competitors taking part this season, reigning champion Patrick Sandell, 2006 runner-up Ermo Arva, and 2004 champion Per Gunnar Andersen were amongst this year's drivers to watch. The inaugural rally Norway opened the 2007 season and saw Arva begin well. He was on the pace, but a tree stump would dent any ideas of a victory. With limited time behind the wheel of his new Clio R3, Sandel was visibly struggling and couldn't match the pace of fellow Swede Anderson. The Suzuki driver was positively putting the rest of the field to shame, winning the rally by a staggering seven and a half minutes and taking the first ten points of the season. Round two in Portugal saw Citroen driver Martin Prokop show an impressive early pace until this horrific accident prematurely ended his rally. Sandel would also fall by the wayside on leg one. Estonia's Ermo Arva took a healthy early lead over Anderson until a puncture on the final leg allowed his teammate to reduce the gap and close in. It would all come down to the final stage, and once more it would be Anderson who would taste victory, his second of the season, by the slimmest of margins. Arthur and Anderson may be teammates, but it didn't stop them from fighting tooth and nail on round three's rally Sardinia. Arthur was impressive and out in front, but would once again stumble and see Anderson take his lead. But this time, the Swede would also lose time with a puncture. And it would be Arva who would take the upper hand and taste the champagne. It was on to the most spectacular rally of the season next in Finland, and both Arva and Anderson had selected the event to miss. Martin Prokop would take the early initiative, pulling out a lead of nearly a minute over the opening two days. But on the first run through the daunting on Poya stage, he went off, and the impact caused irreparable damage to his radiator. The early leader wasn't the only one caught up by Finland's infamous roads. Iga Pars would only get a few kilometres into the opening stage. Taking over the lead, though, after Prokop's mistake was reigning champion Patrick Sandel. The Swede finally getting to grips with the Renault Clio R3 to claim his first and only win of the season. Three tarmac rounds would finish the season starting with Germany, and the event would prove to be disastrous for Anderson. He was replaced by James Wozencroft after a driving ban for a speeding offence in Sweden. Which would be great news for Ermo Arva, who'd arrived in Germany trailing his teammate by four points. He had an early scare on stage four, though, with this overshoot nearly ending in disaster. But with Anderson absent, he would take over the championship lead, although he'd have to settle for second in the rally. Because out front, Martin Prokop had put in a faultless display. He came home with a lead of just under 50 seconds to claim his first win of the season.
Anderson returned at Rally Catalunya with his championship lead gone and a point to prove. A spin on the opening stage, though, was not the start he wanted. Despite that mistake, Anderson led early on, but Arvis stormed past on stage three, and he was just over 10 seconds ahead by the end of the first day. His hard work was undone on the second morning, though. A heavy impact caused a puncture, and after losing nearly two minutes, he fell down to third. There were more serious implications for an error from Renault driver Kale Pinamaki on stage nine. A terrifying drop down a gully after going through a barrier. And the end of the rally for the Finn. Back out front though, Anderson was in a comfortable position in the lead. And despite the odd scare, he came through unscathed for his third win of the season and a crucial 10 championship points. Argo would have to settle for third behind Martin Prokop. And all this meant the fate of the championship would come down to the final round. Anderson and Arbor arrived in Corsica tied on 38 points, so it really was winner takes all. Anderson was second best to Arbor early on, but the Swede began to fight back on the second morning, and the pressure was beginning to build on the rally leader. Arbor came into stage eight just 14 seconds ahead of his teammate, but this mistake would ultimately be the defining moment in the championship race. The Estonian was beached at the side of the road, and although the distraction of seeing his rival off caused a mistake and the puncture for Anderson too, it would not matter. With Arva unable to restart, it effectively made the Swede champion already. Martin Prokop claimed his second win of the season. But it was P.G. Anderson who showboated his way to fifth place and became the FIA Junior Champion for the second time in four years. The Swede putting himself in prime position to step up to Suzuki's new WRC squad next year. That's now two junior titles. Suzuki debuted their World Rally Car this weekend. There'll be a knock on there. Monster's door to try and get a drive in it. Yeah, I already prepared the contract, it's just for him to sign on. <laughs> so with Arva scoring no points on the final round, Anderson claimed the title by five points with Prokop winning a WRC test with Citroen as a reward for his third place finish.